Hello everybody and welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. Welcome back to our Spanish campaign. Uh, this is Legendary Difficulty Campaign and for the first time ever it was a modded campaign where we are utilizing the Brother Monroe's Dreadnought Improvement Project mod. Now, uh, before we get started, uh, I'm going to throw out a few things uh, that you guys are probably going to need to be aware of, and that is the fact that um, they're all gone. Everybody. They're, they're gone. They, they just, they cease to exist. Everybody <laughs> ceases to exist. For the first time ever, I've never had this, this encounter before. So, uh, yeah. Gonna have to edit that into my, uh, my, my, uh, little teaser. You guys know how we do. We're gonna come up, I, I got a script for you guys that I'm gonna read out for you guys. A little dramatization of what happened in the previous episode, as well as what's, uh, currently happening worldwide. So, uh, without further ado, welcome everybody to the stream. Let's get this party started. As the summer sun rose once more over the turbulent waters of the Mediterranean, the echoes of the last battle still ring in the hearts of our brave sailors. In May of 1894, a harrowing encounter unfolded, testing the resolve and the mettle of our Spanish fleet. In a daring gambit, our transport fleet, under the protection of the valiant heavy cruiser Catalonia and her escort of two light cruisers, faced a formidable challenge. A squadron of six Italian light cruisers, intent on disrupting our supply lines and striking fear into the heart of our nation. Despite the overwhelming odds and the loss of nine transports and the light cruiser Infanta Isabel, the crew of the Catalonia refused to yield. With unwavering courage and unyielding determination, they met the enemy head on turning the tide of battle with their valor and skill. Through sheer grit and determination, the Catalonia emerged triumphant, dealing a decisive blow to the Italian fleet and sinking a hard -fought, or securing a hard-fought victory of Spain. Though the cost was high, the spirit of our Navy remains unbroken, ready to face whatever challenges lie ahead. But even as the triumph echoes of the Catalonia's victory reverberated across the waves, the shadow of adversity loomed ever closer. For the Italian fleet, undeterred by their previous defeat, dispatched four more light cruisers in an attempt to intercept the mighty Catalonia. Yet to the dismay of the Italian commanders, their reinforcements proved to be no match for the indomitable, Cat indomitable Catalonia. With her superior armor protection and the thunderous roar of her 7.1-inch main guns, she stood firm against the onslaught, a bastion of Spanish strength and defiance. In a display of unmatched prowess and determination, the Catalonia weathered the storm of enemy fire, her hull unyielding, her spirit unbroken. With every thunderous salvo, she reaffirmed her place as the vanguard of the Spanish fleet, striking fear into the hearts of her foes. And so amidst the tumult of battle and the relentless pursuit of victory, the Catalonia's valor shines brightly as a beacon of hope for Spain. Though the challenges may be great and dangers many, her unwavering resolve serves as a testament to the enduring spirit of the Spanish Navy. As the conflict raged on and the Spanish Navy faced its trials at sea, a glaring weakness threatened to undermine our efforts. The specter of dwindling funds and the looming shadow of insolvency. With our nation struggling to finance the fleet it so desperately needed, a bold solution emerged from the depths of necessity. Forced with the stark reality that our own coffers could no longer sustain the demands of war, the Spanish Navy turned to unconventional means to secure the resources it required. In a daring move born of desperation and ingenuity, we forged a groundbreaking trade agreement with Sweden, a nation in need of naval power and willing to pay handsomely for it. With the coffers replenished, 
and the ships buzz er, and the shipyards buzzing with newfound purpose, the Spanish fleet was revitalized. Its ranks bolstered by the infusion of Swedish gold. As our ships sail once more, emboldened by the promise of prosperity and fueled by the resolve to emerge victorious, the tide of war began to turn. And so, as the flames of conflict finally begin to dim, and the smoke of battle clears, a new dawn breaks upon the horizon. A dawn of peace secured through the sacrifice and perseverance of our sailors. On January 1st of 1895, the signing of the peace treaty marked the end of hostilities and the dawn of a new era for Spain. And as we reflect on the trials and the triumphs of the past, let us remember the resilience and resourcefulness that carried us through. For in the face of adversity, it is not the size of our fleet or the depth of our pockets that defines us, but the strength of our resolve and the unity of our purpose. As the dawn of a new century breaks upon the horizon, the Spanish Empire stands at a crossroads, a moment of reflection, of renewal, and of resolute determination. For though the guns of war have fallen silent, the echoes of our struggle reverberate still, driving us forward on a path of ambition and aspiration. With peace secured and stability restored, the Spanish people have set their sights on a new objective, a mission to strengthen our economy, to fortify our foundations, and to lay the groundwork for a future of unrivaled prosperity and power. For we understand that true greatness is not merely measured in the size of our fleet, but in the strength of our economy and the resilience of our people. As the clock strikes midnight on January 1st, 1900, let us embark on this journey together. A journey fueled by ambition, guided by vision, and driven by the unyielding spirit of the Spanish people. For as we set our sights on the horizon, we do... So not as conquerors, but as builders of a brighter tomorrow. A tomorrow where the Spanish flag flies high and our navy reigns supreme once more. But all was not to be. As the world stirred from the slumber of the old century and embraced the promise of a new dawn. On January 1st, 1900, an unseen force shrouded in mystery and wrought with power, descended upon the seas, a force that would herald the beginning of a new era and the dawn of a profound transformation. In an instant, without warning or explanation, the known order of the world was thrown into disarray. The great armadas of nations, symbols of naval supremacy and national pride, vanished from the map leaving behind only emptiness and uncertainty. The world had been reset. Gone were the warships that once patrolled the oceans with pride and purpose, replaced by a void that echoed with the absence of maritime might. Thousands of sailors, faithful servants of their nations, disappeared along with their ships, leaving behind families and loved ones to mourn their loss and grapple with the uncertainty of their fate. Amidst the chaos and confusion, a sense of urgency gripped the world's capitals. As leaders sought to navigate the treacherous waters of uncertainty and chart a course towards recovery and renewal. For in the wake of this unseen force, the fate of nations hung in the balance, and the future of naval warfare lay shrouded in uncertainty. And so, as the world stands on the brink of a new era, let us steel ourselves for the challenges that lie ahead, and let us seize this opportunity to redefine our destiny and shape the course of history. For in the wake of the unseen force, the stage is set for the emergence of a new hero and the forging of new legends. But let us not forget the sacrifices of those who vanished with their ships, their memory a testament to the cost of war and the fragility of life. There you go. There you go. What up, Pro Warship? How's it going? Stefan, LA? Landon, I guess. AM, how's it going? 
uh, slowest. Good to see you. Eric, Jackson, Aaron, X3. Appreciate everybody dropping in. Uh, yeah, so uh, unfortunately, things have happened. Now, apparently, not everybody suffered as much as we did. <laughs> there are still a few fleets flying around that maybe escaped the Great Reset, the, the unseen force. Maybe they just got lucky they were in the right place at the right time. So there are a few fleets that uh, are still available out there, but none of ours have made it. And if you look at the screen, nobody's fleets made it, even though there are definitely task forces out there uh, for some of these people. Unfortunately, we are not one of them. Now, according to this, this is the only thing that really changed. Uh, so we have to go through and, dis de and design our future uh, because we're in trouble. Now, if the enemy decides at this moment is the moment to attack, and they were one of the few countries that still had ships available, we are in big, big, big trouble, right? So we have to build up a navy as quickly as possible that is capable of standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with the fleets that were left behind. So we're not going to go straight for the big ships right away. We're actually going to go for uh, probably armored cruisers to bail us out of this situation. And I figure they are in like the perfect spot of being able to be built relatively quickly, as well as bringing a decent amount of firepower. So initially, our goal will be to build up at least our three fleets. You guys know the deal. I like to have a th three three fleets for this because we have the Caribbean to protect. We have the North, or we have the Mediterranean, and we have the um, Philippines. So. We've got to protect our territories. So we're going to have to build at least three fleets of heavy cruisers that are capable of, of holding their own uh, amidst the chaos that is coming. Because there are still ships out here, clearly. I don't know what's going on. I don't know if these are going to be usable. But if they are, we're in trouble. Because we are starting over. And we already were in very big danger of running out of money. So, uh, yeah, this is, this is a situation. Now, because of that... Uh, we are making a lot of money right now, so that's good news, but that's going to go away really quickly. But we did set everything to be maxed out. We're currently at 200%, which is the maximum you can do here, uh, on transport capacity. So I'm not worried about pumping that up any further, but tech budget currently and crew training are both maxed out currently, uh, which is leaving us with about $15 million per month in order to, uh, continue where we left off. Um, but because of that, we're also going to be able to gain a lot of crew pretty quickly, which is going to be huge because we're going to need those crew in order to fund our, or fill our ships uh, because the crew disappeared with the ships. Like, we, we could not have had a worse situation unless they just straight up deleted the world, right? But that didn't happen. So we're going to rebuild uh, better than ever. So let's go ahead and start our new design. We're going to start with a heavy cruiser. What up, Jackson? This is Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. It's a game where we get to design and build our own ships and take them into battle. Why do I only have torpedo boat hulls? What in the world is going on? This, this might be unsalvageable, to be perfectly frank. Like this, this might legitimately be unsalvageable. All right, let me just try something. I'm just going to go forward one day and see what happens. Or one month, I guess, and see what happens. Maybe the game will, will reset itself and fix itself by going forward a day here. But yeah, this is not looking good for us. What up, Jose? Good to see you. Yeah, the game definitely glitched. Uh, Austro-Hungarian Empire is offering a trade agreement, which turns out to be more profitable for them than us. Uh, we do not need the Austro-Hungarian as a friend who continuously asks favors for nothing or for nothing in return. Um, a foreign journalist approached asking about a high-ranking person. Uh, I've never heard of them. Uh, we'll just refrain from commenting. All right. Uh, 
Okay, so, with all of that being said, here you can see the rest of the ships seem to have vanished as well. Nobody is currently building anything. Okay, there are a couple of nations that are already starting to rebuild. Can we actually design a ship that is not just a torpedo boat? The answer is no. So this is this has completely changed everything. Why can we not research anything? Or why can we not build anything else? I mean, if we have to start with torpedo boats and then work our way back into it, I guess that's a thing that we can do. But let's hope that as we... Okay, next, next month the hull strengthening comes up. We got battleship and battle cruiser designs that are researching. Uh, battleship design, 13 months. So... Let's try to speed up a couple of these. Let's go for the um, let's go for the heavy cruiser design and the battleship design. See if we can't get those done. Um, yeah. In the meantime, I mean, there's not much we can do. Let's just hope that this fixes it. It's all we can do. It's all we can do. Could go for destroyer design too. Get that done in two months. So destroyers will be done in two months. Heavy cruisers in three months. Six cruisers in six or heavy or battleships in in six months. In the meantime, we'll at least be stacking up some money. So there's that. Um, from a politics standpoint, there really isn't much that we can do here. Um, we're just gonna let it let it ride for now, and we'll just see if we can't can't make this still work if it doesn't work then uh we may end up having to restart the campaign completely but uh yeah this is definitely an unfortunate thing take the mod off uh yeah it's not quite that easy um doesn't quite work like that but uh it definitely is frustrating uh, i i i bear trust me trust me I mean, we've put in, what, about uh, eight hours into this campaign already? To lose all that progress is pretty rough. All right, so next month we should have Destroyer Design, which should unlock something. Okay. So it looks like we might be able to bail ourselves out of here. It's just going to take a little bit of time. In the meantime, things are just going to progress slowly. What up, Triple Play? How's it going? The game decided that you must have only one, have only torpedo boats to avoid another complete domination like Japan. Yeah, basically. That's what it seems like. All right, so we can build a larger torpedo boat. We have Mark II three-inch guns. We have standard firing drills. We're ignoring everybody's provocation. See, that's the thing. Like, there are apparently nations out there that are wanting to take advantage of the situation. Nations with powerful land armies that maybe want to uh, go to war with people. Uh, we can't afford this at the moment because, like, we, we have... Wait, where are we? God, it's, it's throwing me off that they put us at the top now. Um, so, we have an army of just 307,000 people. So, not ideal. We are also very behind in technology compared to everybody else. So, yeah. All I can hope for is that the uh, technology ended up resetting for everybody else as well. Alright, let's go ahead and turn the destroyer design off real quick. That'll get this done next month. Okay, keep that on. That'll be done next month. I'm hoping that this is just something that, with a little bit of time in game, we can kind of get back to a normalcy. But yeah, I mean, the, the game was updated, um, and so was the mod, and so I, I did all the things that I was supposed to do, but yeah, it didn't quite, didn't quite help us, unfortunately. 
All right. So, uh, research-wise, the cruiser should be done. So we're, we're going to pull off of that now. Um, we have two months left for the battleships. So let's go ahead and go into ship design. We should be able to build heavy cruisers now. Okay, there we go. So we have some heavy cruisers. Uh, the turret cruiser is what the Catalonia was originally. We also have this hybrid light cruiser, which is a heavy cruiser. But it can be built out to 4,100 tons. Um, let's see what the maximum is for these. So this one has a 55 hull form, maximum speed of 16.9 knots. Um, this one can go faster. So I think we probably go for this. We can build out to a maximum of 4,500 tons. Heavy cruiser. Let's go with standard crew quarters. Um, this thing is capable of, what do we say, 20 and a half knots? So let's go for 20 knots. Seems relatively straightforward. Main tower. The best tower that we currently own. Rear tower. The best rear tower that we currently own. For funnels, this is always the problem because we don't ever have any decent funnels early on. So we could put this one in there. That one doesn't fit. That one fits. That one doesn't. Yeah. So if we do this, we could build with uh, this here, which gives us an 18.6, which is terrible. We do have induced boilers, and we do have the triple expansion steam engine. And it looks like we still have the majority of our, our technology, so that's good. Um, the only thing we're missing is the hulls, which we can unlock a little bit over time with just unlocking the hulls. So that gives us 50% engine efficiency, which is awful. Like, there is no doubt about it, that is awful. But, for now, it's going to have to work. Alright, so for main guns. Um, we were using 7.1 inch guns to pretty decent effect. So, I think that's probably the, the spot where we would start. So, let's go back to 7, seven inch guns. Throw 7, seven inch guns on both ends. That gives us 4 7 inch guns. Um, for casemates... I definitely want to use the 4-inch guns for casemates if we can. And then as far as secondaries, I don't think there's any place on this ship that's going to allow us to put some decent-sized secondaries. So that's probably going to be that. And then we will throw some underwater torpedo tubes on this thing. All right. So this has a maximum range currently of 5,400 ton or 5,400 kilometers, uh, which is not ideal. Um, what if we just go down to 19 knots? 19 knots takes us up to 63, takes us up to 5,800. Okay. If we drop that down, that gets us under the the tonnage. So that's good. But uh, I would definitely like to have some armor. Alright, so for the 7 inch guns, we currently have 10 inches of faceplate armor. So let's drop that down. We'll go for like 8 inches. And then for the barbette, I want at least a 5 inch barbette. Um, for this, we'll go for 5 inches. Everything else should be good. The diameter should be 7.1 inches because that was what we were using before. So now it comes down to putting some armor on this thing, which we are just going to basically max out what this thing can hold. Or at least the best that we can. All right. So probably not going to be able to do the full max armor. But if we can bring this back. To seven inches. That puts us right at the cap. Uh, bring this down to like three inches. Bring this up to like two inches. Half an inch, half an inch. 
or 15 tons overweight. Could drop this down a little bit more. I mean, these are going to be very, very low range ships, unfortunately, but it is what it is. Um, the one thing that we didn't change was this, so let's go standard. Um, soft capped HE. Okay. That should, should do. All right, so now we can put a little bit more in terms of let's see yeah we, we can put a little bit more on her now which is going to give us a lot more survivability so let's bring this up to let's go two inches if we can and then bring this up as much as we can All right, so we have a little bit of a four-weight offset, but it's not that big a deal. Uh, engine efficiency is not great, but we're under the limit. Uh, we could build these. These are going to be $15.6 million a piece, so not terrible in terms of the cost. Uh, but these should be decently capable ships. Uh, you got four-inch secondaries to help keep some of the riffraff at bay, and then, of course, you've got the seven-inch, 7.1-inch guns that are capable of fending off uh, lightly armored and semi-armored cruisers, hopefully. Obviously, these wouldn't do very good against battleships, but I'm hoping that that's not a thing at the moment. And so these will be built, capable of being built in just 11 months. That's what we're talking about right there. So we can get these on the, on the ocean, protecting our, our interests in under a year. So what do we call this thing? What up, cheese? How's it going? I aced the title of the stream. Surprises for you and us. Yeah. Um, again, it was one of those situations where when I logged into the game, I was like, oh, how am I going to explain this? But it didn't It didn't outright cancel the, the thing. So I thought maybe this would be an interesting, interesting way to add a little bit more flavor because I'm like, we've never had something like this happen before. Like we've had complete saves wiped out and stuff like that. But we've never had a situation where it just wipes out the entire world's navies, right? So this is literally the Great Reset, essentially. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm interested in... Now, the, the best part is, in the lore, how, how does this work? Like, was it an alien force that swept by, saw that we were killing each other, and decided that they wanted to intervene by taking away our most powerful weapons? Like, there's so many questions. So many questions. So what do you guys call this thing? I'm thinking, I'm thinking something along the lines of a rebirth, right? Like, what, what, what Spanish word means rebirth? Because, like, in France, obviously in French, it was the, uh, all, what do you call it? <laughs> I can't even think of the name. I'm, I'm tired. Uh, Spanish for rebirth. Good lord, I can't pronounce that even if I wanted to. Renaciamento. Good lord. The reemergence. I like that. I just can't pronounce it, so I apologize. The Renaissance, duh. That's what I was thinking of for France. I couldn't think of it. I was like, what the hell? Yeah, it's the Renaissance. So basically, it's it's Renaissance here too. Isn't it funny how despite different languages, they all seem to have similar or like similarities? It's crazy.
<laughs> you said it that I wrote it. Yeah. So here we go. So it's basically Renaissance, but in Spanish. So Rena, Ren, Renacimiento. I apologize to all the Spanish folks out there. Jose, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jose. I know you're in chat. All right, let's call it. Uh, we will be building several of these, uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, we will be needing some names, so start coming up with some names for some ships. Uh, given the fact we're going to have three fleets of these, and I don't want any of these guys to be by themselves, I figure at minimum we should probably start with six and see how that goes. So if we go here and build, can we build six of them right off the gate? We can. So that would give us... That's eight and a half million dollars per, per month. So we're still making a profit, which is good. That's going to help us dig our way out of the, the problems. Um, and that gives us a fleet of six heavy cruisers. I kind of want to build one more for each of them. So let's go with three more. That gives us a plus. Uh, we're, still, we're still in a surplus, which is fine. But now we should be able to have th uh, three of these at each at each port. So uh, first three will be obviously at Barcelona. Second three will be at uh, uh, Santiago de Cuba. And then the other three should be at Manila whoops, in the Philippines. All right. All right. So now let's get your names. What we got? SS Jack Jackery. Okay. All right. Well, since I don't have a whole lot of names from you guys, I'll just go ahead and leave them as is then. All right. And that's what we can do for now. So those ships will be built in 11 months. So that's not too bad. Those will get done within the year. Um, by the end of... By this time next year, we should have uh, a small Navy. All right. How's everybody else looking? So, currently, we are building nine ships. The British are building 13, of course. The Germans are building 13. The Russians are building 20. And the Chinese are building 15. So, out of everybody, it, it seems that uh, there is a significant push by everybody to immediately rebuild as quickly as possible. So, it'll be interesting to see how they decide to rebuild. Will they rebuild with capital ships? leaving themselves vulnerable or will they rebuild like we are with smaller ships first and then bring out the capital ships so for now we're just going to let things go please name one the chunky monkey <laughs> come on now come on now Um, we'll change this one, the Isla de Luzon. There you go. You got your chunky monkey. All right. So, uh, this might actually be a good point to try to like build some on to this like how much would it cost per month if we were to build on so it's a total of 288 million dollars i don't think so i think we we hold for now i think we've got a a, a decent size shipyard for now um that's going to allow us to build some ships relatively quickly all right Keep it going. 
uh, from a research standpoint, one more month until we unlock the uh, ability to build battleships. So we will definitely be doing that. Also, if you guys are enjoying, make sure you guys punch that like button. I know it's a bit early, but uh, hopefully you guys have enjoyed so far. All right, so we have officially unlocked the ability, and now Sweden would like three uh, heavy cruisers as well. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll do it. Um, selling ships is, is something that we, we basically need, but I'm glad Sweden is still on our side and that all their ships disappeared too, which means now they get to pay us more money. So, love that. Alright, let's come up with a new design for our battleships. So, we can build a battleship two-hull or a modified barbette ship. So, what is this? Oh my god, that thing's hideous. It's hideous. But I kind of like it. Alright, let's come up with this design first. Alright, so we're going to max out this hull um we'll also give it spacious crew quarters which is something we don't do very often but it is a battleship after all triple expansion steam engine unbalanced rudder steam steering is fine composite armor double hull bottom standard bulkheads citadel I hate how they put that like scroll wheel right there so every time you go to click on something it like tries to break all right so main tower so we have the ma the the mast towers which are heavy but not as heavy as the front towers so this is plus 12 night vision six aiming four aiming so yeah this is better so we'll go with this it's a little bit heavier but it is better. And then a rear tower four, obviously. Throw them on there. What is this hull capable of? Uh, 18 knots is the optimal speed. So I guess that's what we'll go for. See what we can get away with. Funnels. Uh, standard. What is this? 43%. So, yeah, we could get away with doing, like, three of these. There we go. Now, the question is, do I want to do that, or do I want to, like, split this up and go as far forward as I can, and then make this split the difference between the two? I think that, I think that looks better. I like that that better. It's a lot more balanced instead of having them all towards the back. Okay. Um, Eighteen knots top speed is fine. Um, what is our size? Like we could totally make this bigger, right? Like we go beam. Oh yeah. We can make an absolute behemoth. I don't want to go for the draft too, but definitely going with a wider ship is going to help with the uh, the accuracy and stuff too. Um, so we'll hold on to that for now. Main guns. What should we have on this thing for main guns? Now, obviously, the biggest thing that we're going to be fighting right now is smaller ships. So I don't know if we want to go with big, big guns. 10-inch guns are already overpinning everything. So I'm not sure. So these would reload in 75 seconds, whereas these reload in 167 seconds. Uh, Mark 1s, Mark 1s, Mark 2s. So the 10-inch guns are actually Mark 2s. So that makes sense that we would go with the 10-inch guns here, still. So we throw the 10-inch guns on there. there 
Just trying to tighten it up against the superstructure as much as we can. Um, torpedo launchers. We will throw some torpedoes on this thing. I don't normally use torpedoes, but I have it under a uh, pretty good authority that torpedoes are going to be pretty ridiculous in this mod. So having our own torpedoes and our ability to reach out and touch people seems ideal. Throw a couple five inch guns up here in the top. All right, barbette armor. Let's get that on there. We are overweight, but we can work on this. Currently, our range is 8,900 kilometers. Uh, we're going to drop that down, probably down to the about 6,300. Seems fine. Uh, we could probably throw some secondaries on there at like four inch guns. Uh, maybe not. How about three inch guns? Okay, so we can throw some three inch guns, potentially. Except they butt up against the tower, so we're not going to. Never mind. Never mind. All right, well, in that case, I know there probably isn't any chance. I mean, we could probably get two inch guns somewhere, but yeah. It's not worth it. Not worth it. Let's just move on. Uh, so this will be set, set for standard ratio. It'll be base fuse HE. Standard. White powder. Gun cotton. Enhanced. Uh, we will be using the 16 inch torpedoes. Alright, so... Engine efficiency wise, we are a little bit over efficient, but we have plenty of uh, room for armor, so that's good news for us. Currently running 13 and a half inches of main belt armor, which seems a bit high considering we have 10 inch guns. So let's let's kit this out for 11 inches of belt armor. Uh, let's go for three inches of superstructure armor, bring this down to 10 inches of conning tower armor. Um, in terms of main deck, I want at least three inches of deck armor. which we absolutely get away with. And then everything else should be relatively uh, belt, or like belt armor. Uh, we could go for a little bit of inner deck armor as well. Let's go for like half an inch of inner deck armor. And then everything else needs to go into belt armor. So let's go for like nine inches, nine inches. No problem. We can easily get away with that. Beautiful. Okay, 11 inches. Can we just do straight up 11 inches all the way around? Oh my god, we can. Holy sh... This thing's gonna be a tank. I mean, that's basically perfect. Like, literally perfect. It's got a little bit of a four-weight offset. The pitch and roll is fantastic, so we're, we're, great. we're great there. Um, this thing's gonna be a monster. It's gonna be hard to take out. Unless, of course, you got battleship caliber guns. Uh, in which case, this thing's probably gonna take a beating. But, for everybody else, like, this thing should be pretty solid. Yeah. Now, we don't have any barrel tech, unfortunately, so we can't really increase the length of our barrels to make them more accurate. And we, But we do have the coincidence rangefinder on this. All right. So after the... the ren Renascimiento... I, I, I hope I'm saying that right. Class of heavy cruisers. We have these. Uh, these, what would we call these things? These are massive. Like, for, for the time, they are absolutely insane. 18,000 tons. Paloma, Indiana. I kind of like that, actually. <laughs> kind of like that. Um, what do we call this thing? Three inches is average deck size. <laughs> yeah. I see what you did there. What up, AVM? How's it going? Yeah. 
Yeah, so basically you have to you have to go into your thing and and research the next the next technology for the thing and it kind of clears everything up you get your hauls back and stuff like that because yeah we we didn't have anything other than torpedo boats access when we got back into the the game so it's it's a thing we're, we're playing on a modded game file uh the, the game is constantly being updated brother monroe does a great job of updating the mod as quickly as possible but things are going to happen right these are unforeseen like conflicts that are going to happen so i don't have a problem with it as long as it doesn't completely wipe my entire like safe like if I if I come in and my my fleet's gone and I have to rebuild, I can explain that away. I can I can make some lore about it. We can come back. We can have a good time. If I if I log in and my game is just gone, I can't do anything about that. <laughs> so as long as there's something that I can work with, I can explain it away. I can do some storytelling, some fun things, you know, a little bit of lore, make the make it interesting. But yeah, if it's just completely gone, there's nothing I can do about that. navy corruption ah we went with the great reset we don't know what caused it it just out of nowhere every every ships or every nation's ships just vanished along with their sailors so we're having like a uh full-on infinity saga crisis where everybody got or half the population got snapped away that's basically what we're going through in the world right now <laughs> to put it into perspective uh Vengador, aka Avenger. Yeah, that's actually great. I'm going with it. There you go. Vengador. I like it. What up, Capri? Good morning. Good afternoon. All right. These will take 17 months to build. So they still aren't going to take that long to build. But we will definitely need at least three of these. The Bermuda Triangle. Exactly, Breston. You guys get it. You guys get it. I thought that would be fun. Like, I, I had to explain it, right? I had to explain it, but try to, like, keep it lore-friendly. So, like, like I said, I can I can come up with some stories when it comes down to that. Like, I've watched enough sci-fi shit. I can come up with something. <laughs> I, I love me some Marvel. I love me some sci-fi. I love some anime. So, I can come up with some stories. That ain't a problem. It's the... It's the... Whether or not you're actually going to get to actually do anything. That's, that's the the big issue all right so we can build three of these so let's go ahead and do that we're gonna build three of them get three of them on the way one for each so we'll have one at barcelona select one at uh manila and one at santiago de cuba okay so that is probably about to tax out yeah we're, we're getting close on our our uh shipbuilding capacity we're losing a lot of money per month so we're gonna have to do something about that uh in which case we will probably drop our crew training down a little bit here let's take it down to 50 percent uh we're gonna need most of those crew anyway but keep keep them coming um in terms of tech budget i don't want to reduce our tech budget any further as far as research goes, we can go ahead and stop prioritizing that now. We've already done that. What happens if we prioritize this? That'd be 36 months. So yeah, it doesn't really do me any good there to get the battle cruisers. <clears throat> uh, everything else should progress normally. We don't need to go too crazy there. So this will get everything going. But we are losing $11.5 million per month for at least the next at least the next nine months so that'll be about 99 million dollars possibly a little bit more of it we'll call it 110 million dollars so we do have the naval funds to cover that so we're just going to let it go for now an international conference journalists asked about our naval expenditures policy uh, I believe in the continuous development of a powerful military fleet as an answer to the increased naval expenditures of other countries I think that our fleet is equipped with everything necessary to defend itself and is currently focusing on training the crew, or I state that our Navy is ready to fulfill the duty in respect to the agreements with other countries. We're going to go with this diplomatic answer. It helps reduce a little bit of the unrest, as well as give us a little bit of naval prestige. And we did pick up a whole lot of things here. So I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what some of these are, like standard three-mast cruiser. Mine hunter kits again. Mines shouldn't be an, an issue because I don't think they're in the mods. But uh, 
I do kind of want to look at some of these other holes. Ain't gonna lie. So I I did I did look at this this battleship here, and it is ugly as f okay. Like this is ugly as hell. I don't want this in my fleet. But at the same time, I could also see this as kind of a, like an armored light cruiser sort of deal, where we build it. It's clearly a battleship, right? But we build it with small guns that are capable of fending off smaller ships. Uh, standard three mast cruiser, though. Let's see what this is. Okay, so it just got a, It's got its own mast here, and then we would have a mast back here and up front. This. It's got its own superstructure built in already. Interesting. Gunboat? What kind of gunboat? Oh. This is considered a light cruiser? Interesting. What about this experimental three mast? Okay. It's also considered a light cruiser. Okay. Turret cruiser, hybrid light cruiser. It's interesting. I'm wondering. Let's let's come up with a design real quick to build this battleship out, right? Let's just make it as big as possible because we can. It is a gun platform. We'll go with uh, Spacious Crew Quarters again. We're probably not going to build this, but I do want to check it out and see what we can come up with. Alright, so... Uh, for main tower, we got the forward mast. Put that there. Rear mast. funnels uh what is this thing capable of i didn't look it's capable of 16.2 knots so it's not fast it's definitely not what you call fast one funnel is enough interesting very interesting so if we put the funnel there we could potentially go for some guns here. Given that this is kind of wide here, what if we go with some side guns? Can we put... Oh, we totally can. <laughs> oh, you should not give me this power, game. You should definitely not give me this power. Oh, brother. Oh, are these too tight? It's not going to let them, is it? Okay, hold that thought. We'll spread it out just a little bit. It's not going to be ideal. But that gives them a little bit of extra room. We do kind of overlap. Only just a little bit. We are overweight, though. Shocker. Shocker. All right, so for uh, we should have a few casemates. So let's go with five inch casemates because we can throw them in there. And then for the secondaries, what can we put in these? I wonder. Can't quite put the seven inch guns. Yeah. Okay. What about six inch guns? No. Okay, five inch guns. Okay, we could definitely do five inch guns. All right, so we are actually going to end up having to change all of these. Hold that thought. All right, five-inch guns. Put that there. 
rotate this that direction. Okay. Can't still can't put it there, but I can definitely put this here. that there there we go These are considered secondary, so for the mains, standard ratio should be fine. Uh, use some soft capped AG for the secondaries. White powder, gun cotton, enhanced reloading, please. So we are overweight by quite a bit, as we would expect. Uh, let's put our coincidence rangefinder on there. To add to the U.S. is on to some technology that took their fleet as well, the Philadelphia Project. <laughs> yeah. It's definitely a thing. Been some weird things occurring. I don't think we can do a barbette yet, so yeah. I was going to say maybe we could put a barbette there, but I don't think we can. Um, problem is, I don't think there's really a way to do this. If we, we could drop the range down, make these more of a coastal defense sort of situation. Um, could drop the armor. Let's take this down to 10 inches. Three inches, ten inches, go four inches, three inches, three inches, let's go with five inches. Still overweight, but not as bad. Drop this down to like 10 inches. Main belt's currently at 12 inches. Let's drop that down to 10. Okay. We go to just straight 16 knots. What if we take away the induced boiler? Oh, that us, oh, it's too much. Never mind. I was thinking if we if we did that, that would save us a little bit of weight, but no, that's not gonna work. Not gonna work. Could drop from spacious down to standard crew quarters. That'll save us a little bit of weight. I guess we could save a little bit more weight on these turrets. Let's go down to like eight inch faceplate armor. Uh, barbette wise let's go with a nine inch barbette that gets us where we need to be here um, but i would like to add a little bit more belt armor to protect if we can it's not going to be much you can actually add quite a bit of belt armor here didn't see that coming. Okay, so five inches, four and aft. We have the uh, main belt that's 10 inches. Could drop the main belt down a little bit to try to get a little bit more deck armor. Maybe take this down to like nine inches. 
and then see if we can get to two inches on the deck. Can't quite get two inches on the deck everywhere. So we'll just drop this down until we get Okay, so we can do 1.3 inches there, drop this down to like 1.3 as well, and then that should leave us a little bit of weight to play with to get a little bit more armor on the belt, which is the kind of armor that's most needed early on in the playthrough. So 6.2 inch fore and aft belt, 1.3 inch main deck, 9 inch main belt. Is it something that we build though? Maybe this is a situation where we've designed this, we think about it, but we don't actually build it just yet. But what would we call this if we did? What up, uh... Revolunion, how's it going? This is Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. It is a game available through PC. David Villanueva. Ninito. All right. I got you. Again, not a guarantee that we will end up building this thing, but it's a design that might actually be utilized. Uh, it would take 14 months to build, so it's actually not going to take as long to build as our other battleships. Um, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if this will be something that we actually utilize. The Abomination. The Daka Burrito. <laughs> Torpedo Cruiser Hall Time. Uh, I mean, we could look at it, see what we can do. Um, let's see, torpedo cruiser. Okay, what what is the torpedo launchers? It's not really that many torps, though. You only get the one fore and aft and one on e either side. So, yeah, I don't think we're going torpedo cruiser anytime soon. What other hulls do we got, though? So, gunboat, standard three-mast, three-mast experimental. That could be built up to 3,300 tons. Semi-armored cruiser. See, this is something that I could see, like, being used. But again, underwater torpedo tubes, you're not going to have that many of them. I do like the fact that we have a lot of casemates here, but it's a light cruiser. Those casemates would only be capable of being three inches, so I think we'll hold off for now. Uh, well, light cruisers can only be built up to like 3,500 tons right now, so there's only so much we can do with them. But we do have, we have our ships that are being built currently. We are losing... 11 million per turn, but it should be fine. All right, let's keep it going. The government is worried about the growing international tension. A military conf uh, confrontation with the United States becomes possible. What is your advice? Uh, if you want peace, prepare for war. Uh, don't want that. Don't want that. Uh, so negotiate with the United States and if necessary, provide concessions. I don't really want to pay him $20 million, but, uh, definitely on our mind. Cause I don't really want to drop our GDP either. So let's, let's negotiate with them for now. Express the goodwill of the Spanish people. 
The Indonesians are now signing a special alliance and trade agreement with us. Very nice. Very nice. So now we have two allies. Minor nations, but they could buy ships, which in the end of the day earns us money. So uh, I think we are going to have to drop our budget a little bit for the tech to try to like survive for now. go 60 percent still going to be losing 3.2 million dollars per month but that is a lot more palatable than what we currently have i just don't want to get into a situation where we have no money again a 2000 ton max torp cruiser always worked out for you with three to four per side depending on the nation yeah, I think it depends on which nation. Uh, some some nations will have the access to like better ones than others. There is civil unrest in the Italian Empire that is mentioned in several newspapers. Journalists ask our opinion. Uh, the Russian Empire is behind it. Uh, I do not know anything about it. Or the increased global military awareness can cause unrest in any country. This is why we need to invest more in our naval fleet. I don't want to do that. So uh, I don't know anything about it. It's not my job to worry about the unrest in other countries. All right. For the meantime, uh, from a pol politics standpoint, where are we currently sitting? Okay, so we have $13.5 billion GDP, which is pretty awesome. I'd like to get that higher, obviously. Um, but the fact that we're, we're, we're doing that well, because not that long ago... We were like half of this, so we're, we're doing pretty well. Um, the biggest, the closest that we're coming to war at this point would be the Russians and the Americans, uh, the Japanese and the Chinese. Basically, the entire world wants to wants to hurt us for some reason i don't know why like all we did was go to war with italy and beat their ass yeah 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 i know that if you increase the length of the ship specifically the length of the ship uh, it actually increases the amount of torpedo tubes on some ships and whatnot. I, I, I know that. But even then, I mean, probably only going to get like one extra torp per side. So instead of having one torp per side or two torps per side, you'd have three or two. And that comes with a drawback as well. All right. So financially, again, losing a lot of money, but we can handle it for now. Uh, fleet will be ready to go in six months for the heavy cruisers and 13 months for the battleships. I'll show you guys what I'm talking about with the, uh, the ships again. So if we go with the torpedo cruiser in particular, um, drop the beam, drop the draft, Increase the displacement as max. And go for torpedo launchers. You can see we would have the ability to do a three three broadside torpedo. So you only get the one extra by doing that. But like if, if you go back here. I guess we can technically get away with maxing out the displacement. But. It's not a bad idea. It's just something that we don't normally. Utilize a lot. These these early cruisers just tend to explode so quickly. Uh, that's uh, we've already seen it with our cruisers that we've had in our fights like they, they just get they get absolutely torn apart. You can't armor them very well. And then when you do like they. They screw up and they, they take a wrong turn and bad things happen. Like, I prefer bigger ships personally. But that's just me. 
and we do have we do have torpedoes on our battleships and our heavy cruisers so it's a thought but it's just not something that's in the cards right now for me now later on absolutely i'll go with some light cruisers but early on it's it's just it's not ideal for me True strength, no peace. Yeah. In a foreign press conference, you believe, uh, or sorry, in a foreign press conference, you have been severely criticized by the Chinese emperor's empire's admiral of the navy what is your reaction i find it unhonorable to talk about someone when he's not present i advise him to criticize himself and his poor navy <laughs> i mean that sounds like something that i would say to be honest it's like why don't he take his his criticism and shove it up his ass i think that's what we'll go with i'm not ready to go to war with china but by god if he wants to run his mouth i'll i'll, I'll chip back i ain't scared 5,000 ton heavy cruiser is now capable of being built. Nice. SAP! Finally! We'll see if that works out. We might actually do some uh, experimenting with that. Indonesia would like a Ninito class battleship. I bet they would. Um, it's going to cause us to lose some money for a while, but they will pay a profit of 102%. Um, honestly, Indonesia. You're going to pay $10.3 million now. I mean, we could totally do it. I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and accept, but this is not a very large profit. I probably should say no here. But they are a new ally, so we want to kind of uh, keep them in the loop. Money is money. It is going to cost us money, though. All right, how's our research doing for everything else? Everything is pretty slow because we have no money. Shocker. All right, let's keep it going. Next. One superimposed large gun turret is available. Beautiful. So now we can actually put uh, barbettes on our ships. Isn't that nice? Isn't that nice? All right, let's check our politics again. So the U.S. just strengthened uh, ties with us a little bit. So that's kind of cooled off a little bit. Uh, the French still don't like us. The Germans don't really care for us. They're, they're not hostile, but they're not happy with us. And then, of course, the Japanese, the Chinese, very, very ha unhappy with us. And the Russians. The Russians definitely don't like us either. Um, let's look at everybody else. Do they actually have navies yet? The Germans have a fleet of 15 ships. The Chinese have a fleet of 10 ships. They are torpedo boats. So these guys went with building torpedo boats. Um, so, yeah, I mean... In theory, when our navy comes on, we will actually have probably the the most tonnage. So, should be okay. Next. Our fishermen complain that they are getting harassed by the German Empire's military ships in every possible way. The government asks how you should respond. Send an official protest. Send a naval squadron. We don't even have a naval squadron yet, so I don't know how that would work. Or ignore. Uh, we're going to send an official po protest. All right. All right. 
Still growing our GDP. We're at 13.8 billion. Two more months until our heavy cruisers come online. So we should start to maybe make some money again real soon. <laughs> some of the stuff you guys come up with in the chat is pretty funny. All right. So our our light or our heavy cruisers should be done building next month. They will take a month or so to commission, but that'll at least give us some naval presence. An embarrassing incident involves the Italian Empire. One of their most wealthy businessmen in naval construction industry is accused for illegal activities in our country. If we prosecute this person, our relations with the Italian Empire will be affected negatively. What should we do? Um No, we are definitely going to prosecute the man. Sorry. You spy. Stay the hell away from our shipyards. Industrialists who are impressed by our Navy are ready to invest for the needs of the fleet. What is your answer? The Navy would uh, would certainly appreciate it. Uh, that would give us a lot of influx of cash, $41 million. Better to invest their money in the development of the industrial infrastructures. The economy's, or The country's economy could be used. Uh, we don't have that much unrest, so we are definitely going to be boosting the GDP. So, better invest your money in the development of the in industrial infrastructures. Yes. Now we have, uh, double barrel secondaries, potentially. Sweden would like to order a Vingador-class battleship. I bet you would. And they will offer us a profit of 116% when it's done. Sure. All right. So all of the heavy cruisers are being commissioned currently, which should make us one of the most powerful navies in the game right now. Oh, it's not it's not registered yet, but it will soon, hopefully. All right. Um what we say it was eight, 8 months for the battleships to come online. Keep it going. We are losing a lot of money, but there's not much I can do about that. Good morning, Andrew. Hash Brown, how's it going? Do, do, do. Hey, we have discovered some more oil in the uh, Philippines. Beautiful. More money for us. Let's go. We're up over $14 billion GDP now. Loving it. Loving it. All right. If we go to politics now, what are we, what are we looking at? So naval power rating. We are at uh, 43,000 tons of naval uh, ships. So we are... The most powerful navy in the world currently. Ah, go figure. Everybody else went with the uh, light light cruiser and torpedo boat route. And we have gone for heavy cruisers and eventually battleships. Okay. Um, Not much we can do, though. Just kind of holding on for now. We do have navy officially. So... Now might be the time to go after somebody. Who is the one that is closest to going to war with us? It'd be the Russians. Okay, what are the Russians capable of reaching currently? Like, their Black Sea Fleet, obviously. Possibly some ships over here, if they have any. I don't even know if they have any ships over here. Doesn't appear that they do. So, that's good news for us. 
Okay, so maybe we go ahead and start poking the bear. Let's increase tension. Getting to go to war with the uh, Russians right now might be profitable for us. They don't really have any extra territory that we could potentially take, so I'm not worried about that. I mean, this would be mostly a, uh, you know, a training war for our, our crews. They have a lot of small ships, so we could easily take out a lot of small ships, take very little potential damage in the process. Um, maybe, hopefully. And then, of course, we have our battleships that will be coming up in seven months. So... A new semi-armored cruiser is available, and we can build up to a 3,750-ton light cruiser now. The Japanese want to warm up with us, but they failed. Maybe if they hadn't broken the alliance previously, that wouldn't have failed. All right. So we are officially making money, which is crazy. Uh, everybody is in, in in being, so let's go ahead and select everything. And set them to limited. That will give us a decent amount of monthly income. So that we can start to build up our coffers a little bit. Uh, we are going to probably just immediately use that for this, however. We need to get our tech coming up, so. Alright, keep it going. The Minister of Finance believes that the fleet needs more destroyers. He is ready to allocate adequate funds to the construction of destroyers. Okay, so if we agree, he just gives us a lot of money, which is going to drop our uh, relations with everybody in the world. Uh, explain that our destroyers are enough. We don't even have destroyers. Or he should, he should not interfere in Navy's matters. Uh, this gives us prestige. We don't need unrest dealt with, but getting a little bit of extra prestige probably wouldn't be a bad thing. Yeah. Let's let's go for this. Torpedo boat destroyer is officially available. Nice. I mean, once we start being able to, like, inject cash into our, our, our research, like, we can kind of go ham with it. go for that we're losing a 1.6 million per turn not going to be ideal but we can deal with it for now yeah let's keep it going just try to build up our research budget a little bit Agreeing is always the best option. Eh, I mean, the thing is, like, I don't need destroyers, and the destroyers early on are kind of meh, because they just don't have the range to torp things. Um, so, I don't really utilize destroyers all that often early on. They are kind of a mid-game sort of deal. Uh, and then late game, they tend to be like convoy raiders. Like, they, they lose their effectiveness almost completely. So... I don't utilize torpedo boats at all. I usually avoid them. Uh, and then once destroyers are available, then I kind of go for destroyers up until like 1915 to 1920. And then after that, I kind of just start going for, uh, you know. So, all right. Research. What is, what is going on in the world right now? What do we got? So we got battleship hulls coming online in four months. Interesting. Uh, new boilers, engines, range finders. So we'll have our stereoscopic range finders in the near future. A lot of guns getting worked on right now. Okay. Let's 
keep it going. Probably should keep poking Russia. I don't know. I don't know what I want to do. Like, part of me wants to, but Russia doesn't have anything that I can really take. I mean, I could potentially take, like, Crimea and stuff, but do I really want that? Like... Like, that just adds an extra area that I have to protect. You know, we could we could potentially take this from them. Um, maybe Ukraine, but that would take a lot of a lot of time to build up enough to actually take these provinces from them. Um, and a long drawn out war we've already seen does not benefit us at all. We just don't have the funding for it. All right. So three more months, our battleships will be built. So that's good. And then, of course, we got all these ships being built for the other other nations. For our allies. Sweden would like a heavy cruiser. Okay, that's fine. Go ahead and bump this up now. Is there anything in particular that we're looking at? I don't think so. I think we just need to let this run and get caught up while we have some money. Yeah, if th that's the other thing. Like, if we went with Italy, you need so much tonnage to take all of those stuff from Italy. Like, it it's insane. So we don't have anywhere near the tonnage available to to do like naval invasions and stuff yet. So just not not in our cards. So it it's it's an interesting playthrough for sure. And us getting reset definitely did not help because we had a decent sized navy for a little bit there, and then of course it just gets wiped out. So. Costa Rica's new leader was found. Okay. Yes. How much do we need? We need 17,000 tons. Okay. Well, we should have that here, right? Oh, that is not enough tonnage. That is not enough tonnage. Um... Our battleships will be done in one month. How many times? This is 17. Okay, so one of our battleships will be done and will be here next month. How long will this take? This is supposed to be four months. Uh, so we'll have to wait for the battleship to get there for sure. So we'll let this go for now. It's going to make it take a little bit longer, but that should be fine. Next turn. Buenos dias, Uncle Stir Fry. Good to see you. Mark 1 16 inch guns. That's kind of crazy. That's kind of crazy. All right, so if we take these guys, I don't think we'll be able to, but yeah, I was going to say this is going to be commissioning, so we're going to have to wait how long? 2 months for them to commission. Okay. Buenos dias. 
Stereoscopic rangefinder is officially completed. Nice. Look at all the tech we're getting now. This is what I'm talking about, man. Finally been able to put some money into the bank. Uh, total profit of 85%. No. Sorry. Sorry, Sweden. All right, we should have one more month for these to get commissioned, so then we can send them over here. I hope that we will have enough to, like, actually take this, because that would be, you know, more territory for us. We already have a navy in the neighborhood, so... All the technology that we're starting to unlock, finally. All right, let's move these guys over. Hope for the best. Um, how long would it take to send our fleet from here? Just in theory. It would take three turns. That's it? Okay, well, yeah, let's do that. If we can send them over there that quickly. I thought it would take a lot longer, to be honest. But, if, yeah, if they can make it in three turns, then they can definitely uh, help us take Costa Rica. That'd be big. All right, so we are losing a lot of money now. Shocker. Okay. Um, crew poll is still being worked on. Could probably drop the crew training down a little bit. But I'm kind of liking the idea that we're getting so many potential, like, upgrades. Alright. Let's keep it going. Next. Don't forget, if you guys are enjoying, go ahead and punch that like button. I know we haven't had any fights this episode, but... I'm trying. I really am. Okay, they want heavy cruisers for a profit of 100%. Sure. Okay. So now we definitely have enough tonnage here to at least trigger this so it's not going to take any longer and then these guys will uh, get in here within the next two months and hopefully give us enough chance to succeed that we take costa rica because costa rica should be a decently profitable province for us we'll see we shall see Indonesia has officially defeated the remnants of the Netherlands forces and gained full control of Java. Very nice. Very nice. All right, next month these guys should arrive on scene. So now these guys have all of Java, huh? Well done. Be gone, Netherlands. Anyway, next. Okay, the entire world is building new ships again, so this could take a minute. Never mind, that didn't take any time at all. Okay, so now we can increase the uh, gun barrels 
on small guns. Dude, Sweden, why are you why are you trying to rip us off, man? 65% profit. I mean it's plus 65%, but I would like that to be higher. But they're giving us 25% down, so let's do it. Let's just do it. They're our allies. Let's just try to help them out. Everybody's got to rebuild their navies, right? All right, so we have a 100% chance to succeed now. That's good. Okay, <clears throat> we are losing $20 million per turn, though. Let's take these three. <clears throat> okay, they're already in limited. Set it to be limited. Okay. From a research standpoint, we are getting quite a bit of stuff, but still not quite caught up. Torpedo size is about to get bigger, though. We're about to get 17-inch torpedoes. The torpedoes. The torpedoes. All right, next. We are going to have to get our, our spending under control relatively soon here, though. Uh, we can build destroyers now. Very nice. With 17-inch torpedoes. Sweden would like some more heavy cruisers, so I will definitely continue to do that. These ones will get us even more money. Three more months left for this, which would put us losing $66 million-ish. Okay, three months until that battleship finishes building. And then we've got a bunch of cruisers over the next year or so that's going to be getting built and just be an influx of cash for us. So we should be okay, question mark? We'll see. Glad you're enjoying, David. Advanced medium funnels. Okay. Everybody canceling their... Uh... Oh, Thailand's new leader was found to support armed terrorists. Okay. I mean, that's definitely something we can look into. But I would need 51,685 total tons. Um, I can't. I don't have that much tonnage. I mean, I might have that much tonnage if I had all three fleets in one spot, but I just don't think I have that tonnage. All right, let's try it, but we'll, we'll look at it. So obviously this is the Costa Rica, so in Thailand. It would take six months, 51,000. What is our total tonnage right now? Total tonnage is 98,000. So yeah, I would need all three fleets in the same location. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to do that. Because by the time I get them over there, I mean, this will probably fail. But you never know. Uh, I know we have roughly, what, 20,000 tons here. Uh, there's got... 20,000 plus 12,000... I mean, we could move them out. It's still not going to be enough to trigger it. And then this should finish within, what, two months? Yeah, so two months we finish this, and then we would have to send these guys immediately over to that as well. And hope that they can arrive in time, which is going to be the big... The big kicker. Because the Panama Canal does not exist yet. <laughs> so they can't just sail through here and go over to the to the uh, Pacific. They would have to sail all the way around. So I don't think that 
logistically we could pull it off. But doesn't mean I won't try. Okay, one more month. This should be done. We're losing so much money, it's not even funny. We are building a lot of stuff that is going to be coming out and giving us a good influx of cash, though, including a battleship that comes out next month. So we're okay. What up, Lord Vader? CSI, how's it going? Okay, we have officially taken Costa Rica, which is good for us. Let's go ahead and see how long it will take for us to get over All right, sorry about that. Phone ring. Um, what was I doing? Oh, let's see how long it would take for us. Mother. Sorry about that. Anyway, let's see how long it would take us to get over here. Seven turns. Um, that is not going to arrive in time. So, yeah, you guys might as well just go home. Basically, once this, reach, once this ticker reaches 12 months, uh, we fail anyway. So, we would not have time to get over there. So, we're just going to send our fleets back home. To their respective ports. All right. Um, but at least we got some new territory. The next thing we would do is try to modernize our fleets with the new technology that we've we've picked up. So as soon as everybody gets home, we can look at uh, refitting the ships and uh, potentially saving some money. We're at about half a billion dollars. By the way, if you guys want... Uh, Want that, that ringtone? It is available through my Teespring store. It's only 99 cents. So, highly recommend it. It's hilarious. Highly recommend it. Alright. So, um... Keep a look. Next turn. What would I suggest for a bureau project? I mean, it all depends on what you've already done. Um, I, I, I don't know what ships you already currently have. I know that like when it comes down to it, uh, Christopher O'Colombo, Yama, um, Montana are fantastic for what they are. Um, Bergonia for some people, they, they love those. I personally don't really care for them. Um, 
Conqueror can be fun. Um, any of the cruisers are pretty solid. I don't think there's really a bad cruiser at Legendary tier. All of the destroyers at Legendary tier are pretty nasty as well. So it just comes down to your, your play style of what you prefer. Uh, 92%. Uh, let's do it. All right. One more month, we should be home. Everybody's provoking us. Why? What have we ever done to piss everybody off? The Russians are really pissed at us. Like, the Russians are about to go to war with us. Do they have any allies? No, but they have a lot of people that are very favorable of them for some reason. Including the Italians, the Germans, and the United States, and even Britain. Not ideal. Not ideal. Alright, let's take our fleet. Set them to uh, limited. Currently. Alright, so we are still losing $13 million per turn. Um, let's go ahead and look at our heavy cruisers and go ahead and do a refit for the heavy cruisers where we will add the better guns if we have them okay uh, what, what else do we have we have nickel steel armor So that should make our armor quality better. We do have anti-flooding now, so we'll throw that in there. Also anti-torpedo protection. Do have barbed anti-flash 2 protection. And reinforced bulkheads. Um, in terms of high explosive, we're using soft capped. And for, for armor piercing, we are using standard armor piercing. Uh, let's go with Ballastite. I'm not running fast torps. Let's go with 17-inch torpedoes. And let's throw the stereoscopic rangefinders on there. So we are overweight by about 51 tons. We will have to uh, adjust somewheres. One of the things that we could potentially adjust on this would be to... I don't think we can change anything there. So I think it's armor that's going to have to be adjusted, unfortunately. Could make the ship a little bit bigger. And then that doesn't really help us with our weight situation. Because that increases the the engine power needed to get us up to speed. I would have thought having nickel steel would have dropped our armor weight, which would have made us a little bit lighter. Um, that doesn't appear to be the thing that happens in this mod. So good to know. So we will get the benefit of having better armor, but we don't get the benefit of losing the weight that comes with better armor. Okay, um, so in that case, I think probably dropping some of our armor would be the way to go. We need to save 51 tons, so let's just drop it. Across the board here. There you go. So we're losing a little bit of armor, but we're gaining more accuracy. Um, our guns should be more, like, more accurate as well. Our 7.1 inch main guns, though, do we keep those? Because they're Mark ones. Let's look at the main guns real quick. If we go down to a six inch gun, we could go with the Mark II. 
Or we go up to a 9-inch gun, we go to a, a Mark II. These 6-inch guns are accurate at 35%. At a thousand meters, whereas the 7.1 or 30% at a thousand meters. So we don't really lose any accuracy or we don't really gain any accuracy there. Um, reload time, though, we are going to be reloading a little bit quicker with the six inch guns. We also have the ability to increase the, the barrel length of our secondaries which will allow them to fire out a little bit further and be more accurate. I th think... I think we keep the seven inch guns. Um, I know it's it's probably not the best choice. I think going down to the six inch guns probably better, but for now I think we'll be okay. Uh, we did put the stereoscopic rangefinder on there. We've got our enhanced reloading. We've got 17 inch torps, so we should be good there. The only thing is we'll have to drop a little bit more tonnage to make this work. So let's go down to like. Okay. There we go. That'll work. Let's go ahead and finish that. Um, now, if we look at our Vingador class battleships, we should be able to refit these as well. So, Barbet Anti Flash 2. Let's go with the Nickel Steel Anti Torpedo. Anti-flooding. Still Citadel 1. Uh, let's go with reinforced bulkheads. We are wanting to use the 17-inch torpedoes. We have the enhanced reloaders. Let's go with ballastite. Gun cotton, same. Let's go with the stereoscopic rangefinders here as well. All right. Um, let's go with more barrel length. On the small guns and then we have about 322 tons worth of stuff that we need to to drop so the six inch casemate needs to be dropped down a little bit here let's go to like seven inches of casemate armor um, three inches is fine the five inch guns casemate should be down to the seven inches as well That'll save us quite a bit. We do have a 14-inch barbette on our 10-inch guns, which is a bit ridiculous. Let's go 10 inches there. Let's go 10-inch faceplate as well. That gets us under the limit and leaves us with a little bit of extra. Um, we have a little bit of tonnage to play with here, so why not add a little bit more protection, huh? So 11-inch main belt, aft belt, four belt, 3-inch main deck, aft deck, and four deck. How do we want to do this? Probably go up to a 12-inch belt all the way across if we can. Probably can't, though. So it'll be a 12-inch main belt with a little bit of fore and aft belt. Should still offer plenty of protection. Three inches of deck armor should be plenty um, at the ranges we're going to be fighting at. So, yeah, it should be good. All right, so that'll take two months, so let's save that. I'm not going to bother refitting the uh, the other battleship, just due to the fact that we're not even building them. We're only building them for our, our allies, so should be fine. Can you design your own ship and sandbox? Uh, yeah, I mean, in the um, custom game, you can absolutely design your own ships. Ooh, 
what what is the uh, call sign for the Japanese Navy or the not Japanese the Spanish Navy? Um, I don't know. What up, Joey? All right, so let's go ahead and refit our ships, shall we? All right, so we can refit all of our Navy at the same time, which is good. That'll only take two months for the battleships, one month for the uh, heavy cruisers. Yo, Jeff coming in, dropping $10 bomb on the chat with 10 gifted memberships. Thank you so much, man. Appreciate you. Get a goat in the chat for Mr. Jeff. We just unlocked seven inch Mark II's. God dang it. <laughs> what are the odds? We refit our freaking heavy cruisers and immediately unlock Mark II guns. Is that not how it goes though? Every time. All right, well, we're gonna refit them again because now we have Mark II guns, so that makes sense. Uh, that's, that's so annoying. <laughs> what are the odds that the moment I decide to refit that we would get the seven inch Mark II's All right, so that, that saves us a little bit of weight as well. So we can add... A little bit of armor on here. All right, we'll go with 6.4 inches. All right, save it. So now we have the Mark II 7.1 inch guns, which should be pretty accurate. Fire a little bit faster. It's, it's just funny how that works. It's like, ah, yes, clearly, clearly we wanted to make sure that you had your, uh, Mark twos. All right, we'll go ahead and get rid of this. And then we will uh, refit everybody again. All right. Uh, the next thing we need to do is start looking at... Uh... Wait, we don't have 7-inch guns, right? No, it's 6-inch and 5-inch. I was going to say, if we just got 7-inch guns for this too, I'm going to be upset. Okay. So the next thing we need to look at is potentially saving money by making sure everybody's limited. Everybody is limited. Never mind. So that's not going to save us any money. Everybody will be done next turn. All right. So we're currently losing $9 million a month. Supplementing that by building ships for our allies. We currently have three battleships, one in each theater. Uh, we have nine heavy cruisers. Well, I know they were called the Spanish Armada, but I mean, I think what they're talking about is where like in the British, you have HMS. Um, you, in the US, you have the USS. Um, in the Japanese, you had IJN. Um, but I'm trying to think of like what, what the Spanish designation would be for their fleet. Yeah, see, so yeah, that's what I thought you were talking about, Rebel Union. Yeah, the Spanish were very influential in naval history. Like they, they were right up there with like the strongest navies in the world for a long time. The Spanish, the F the uh, French, and the British. Uh, Sweden would like another one. That's that's not. I mean, it's not much profit, but I guess for now. 
Okay. Let's go. Uh, we are losing a lot of money, uh, but it is what it is. Let's make sure that everybody is limited. Everybody is. As we build these ships, like the money sh problem should sort itself out. So I'm not too worried about that. In terms of politics, I know we're on the cusp of war with, with Russia. They current Holy mother of God, they, they have built up quickly. I mean, it's it's all small stuff, but damn. 21 light cruisers, 34 destroyers, and 22 torp boats now. Good lord. All right, let's go into ship design. Let's build our next, our next uh, section of ships here. So... We have, we have come up with a new design or new uh, hulls for destroyers. So this is our first destroyer. It's not a very big one. Can build up to nine or eight hundred and fifty tons apparently. Uh, what is our torpedo range? One point six kilometers. So terrible. So yeah, building a destroyer just seems pointless. Okay, never mind. Let's try something else. So, light cruiser time. I think we still have these terrible light cruisers, so I don't think we're going to be able to do anything there. Uh, in terms of battleships, we've already come up with those. We did come up with a new uh, heavy cruiser hull, which might not be a bad idea. Because currently, we have these heavy cruisers. So this is a slightly more modern heavy cruiser. What is the hull capable of? Uh, 21 and a half knots. So let's go for that. 21.5 knots. Let's see if we can get away with it. Front tower 3, obviously. Rear tower 4. From a funnel standpoint, could just do standard funnels. Let's uh, make sure that we're using everything that we can. All right. So what are we looking at in terms of... Okay, so we would need four of these funnels. Okay, we can definitely get four in here. So now we're going to space them out a little bit. Something like that. That gives us plenty of engine efficiency, finally, for our heavy cruisers. Um, in terms of main guns, we do have the Mark II 7-inch guns. But I'm thinking we start to look at going a little bit, a little bit more uh, bigger guns. So maybe the nine-inch guns would be a good choice. These are going to be heavy. Comparatively. I kind of want to kind of want to build these ones for like SAP potentially. I want to test out the SAP on these. So we're going to use semi ballistic or semi armor piercing um, with soft gap AG. So we'll build for uh, standard ratio. And All right, so torpedoes, underwater torpedo tubes. Let's throw those in. In terms of casemates, I want the six inch casemates. So 
We've got a mix of casemates. That should be pretty solid to help protect us. I don't think there's anything else that could be put on here. I lied. Apparently there are some 4-inch guns that can be put in there as well. We are overweight by a little bit. Let's go with standard crew quarters. The range can be dropped down. We don't need these to be crazy range. Um, I would like it to be at least 5,000, so let's bring it up just a little bit. Okay. Let's go with the anti-flash protection 2. How long? These will take 13 months to build, as is. So, currently, these are accurate... Or capable of shooting out to 8.9 and 9.2 kilometers. So, 6-inch guns should be anything. 5-inch guns are a little bit shorter range. I think I'm going to go ahead and increase their accuracy, though. I'm going to go ahead and bump up their barrel lengths on all three gun sizes. Leaves us 200 tons to play with in terms of armor. So, let's go for like a quarter inch of armor inside the Citadel. And then everything else, we're going to have to go for like 3 inches on the superstructure. Um, let's drop this down to 4 inches. Let's take this up to 2 inches on the deck if we can. We cannot. Okay. Well, in that case, let's drop uh, the deck armor down to 1 inch. And then that should allow us to have a little bit more belt armor. So we'll go like six inches main belt. Hmm. Uh, it does not want me to have this. How do we... Oh, we have way too much armor there. So let's go 9 inches, faceplate. Um, let's go 7 inch barbette armor. That saves us quite a bit of weight. There we go. This can be dropped down to like 7 inches... Seven inches. Whoops. Four inches. Should save us quite a bit of weight. And now we should be able to add a little bit more belt armor and potentially deck armor as well. Um, let's bring this up. Let's go four. Okay. I mean, we're right on the edge of what we can do now. Yeah, that puts us over. Okay. Well, I think that'll probably be about all that we can get away with. Yeah. So this will be a experimental heavy cruiser. See how this works out with the SAP. Uh, slightly bigger guns, 9-inch guns instead of the 7-inch guns. So should be more capable of dealing with armor. Uh, should also still offer a decent amount of protection while also increasing our overall speed and uh, range for our heavy cruisers. So, yeah, what do we call this thing? Jalapeno popper? Dude, now you're making me hungry. Casa Bonita? The Ardila? Ardia? Seriously recommend minimizing your beam and sometimes draft when your engine weight becomes uncontrollably high. Yeah, you can definitely reduce the beam of the ship to, to decrease your overall engine weight, but at the cost of gun stability as well. Like As you make the ship narrower, it cuts through the water easier, but it also becomes less stable as a gun platform. More than legit.
conquistador class. All right, let's go for that. We'll go for the conquistadors. All right. So building these things is going to be an interesting premise. So if it's an experimental cruiser we want to test out, um, maybe we start with building just three, one for each, each theater. Or do we build six of them? I'm thinking we go ahead and build six of them. All right. Financially, we are in ruin, so we need to uh, chill with our spending a little bit. Um, one of the ways that we can do that would be to reduce our overall expenditures. So let's drop crew training down a little bit. That'll save us decent chunk of money but then we got to drop this down by quite a bit at least until we get the stuff built let's go to 40 percent on our research budget all right in the meantime let's go ahead and set them up to their ports so two of these will be at barcelona two of these will be at Havana. Two of these will be at Davao. Or Davo. I think it's Davo. Anyway, that is that. So politics-wise, we are on the cusp of war. Let's check out the Russians and what they think of us currently. I'm going to go ahead and try to increase tension one more time. Uh, get that war started. If we're going to go to war, we might as well do it on our terms. Instead of waiting for them to continue to pump up their, their fleet numbers. And uh, yeah, let's go. The Russian Empire has sent us an ultimatum demanding a, us to withdraw our fleet that is operating near their borders. This is a claim that is absolutely bullshit because we don't have a fleet near their borders. So for that, I say go f*** yourself. This is an absolute disgrace. We should never accept this. If they want war, then so be it. We're going to war. At a press conference, journalists ask you a question about the foreign policy of France's government. What, do you, what is your answer? Um, I don't really have one. They have an adventurous policy that often conflicts with our own. Their government is reasonable, contributing to strengthening of relations between our countries. Uh, di diplomatically redirect the question of the foreign policy department. Uh, let's go with this. That'll improve our relations with France potentially a little bit. Unrest has gotten high all of a sudden. It's almost like we're at war. But, uh, yeah, we are officially going to war with them. Um... 98% profit for a heavy cruiser. Sure. Let's do it. The Antilles new leader was found to support. Okay. Uh, we need a total of 12,000 tons. Yes. Where are you at? Where, where are we at? Okay. The Dutch Antilles. We have a fleet right here. So get over there. We have plenty of, of tonnage for it, so hopefully this time we can take it. Um, in the meantime, it's time to move our ships out into the open. I uh, normally would not want to keep our battleships by themselves, but given the fact that we know that the Russians probably aren't going to want to attack us, um, I'm thinking that we do two fleets two heavy cruisers and two two uh our battleship and heavy cruiser can go by itself too so we'll send these guys up into the black sea they do have a battleship 
So we're, we're literally going straight into poking the bear. Basically, I want these guys to stay close to home to protect. Uh, we have these guys moving around as well. Most of their fleet seems to be coming out of the Baltics. So... Yeah, maybe... We take the heavy cruiser and protect G Gibraltar here. That way, if they come in through this way, we can we can kind of deal with that. I lied. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, everybody else should be at least on alert, but not necessarily worried because they shouldn't. Okay, there is a destroyer there. So they are building some fleet capacity we'll have to keep an eye on that uh in the meantime these guys should be able to get there next month no problem and hopefully we can take that this time um we are still losing money though which is unfortunate but i think the reason we're losing so much money is we're building so much right now yeah, we're, we're building a lot of ships. We're building two battleships currently for the uh, the Allies. Building a whole bunch of cruisers, including our own. So yeah, it's going to take time. Alright. Well, in the meantime, let's keep it going. What up, Drift King? How's it going? Mind Warp, good morning. South Sudan has been conquered by the Italians. Interesting. All right, so these two heavy cruisers should be able to protect our interests in the Mediterranean for now. We do have a light cruiser there. I'm actually going to split these guys up. I'll send one over here to the Eastern Mediterranean. Send the Trinidad uh, Val Valencera over there. Um, our battleship and heavy cruiser split up, and the battleship is up here on its own, hoping to draw out the... We'll go ahead and invade there so that we start knocking out transports. So your goal is going to be protecting our transports in our home waters. Uh, you will actually go up here to the Bay of Biscay. You will protect up here. Your, your role will simply be to protect. Due to the fact that we know that they will be sending fleets from the Balkans. So being able to defend our territory here is a good idea. Okay, what are our odds to take this? Currently, is only 45%. That is awful. But I can't afford to split up even more fleets to come over here. Uh, it'll be over before that happens. So we just got to hope, hope for the best. And then once this either passes or fails, we will probably end up sending these guys over to the Mediterranean to help us anyway. Because I don't think the Russians are going to be over here anytime soon. Uh, let's look at the rest of the politics, though. There might be other players that could potentially be a problem for us. I don't think they will, but uh, I think right out the gate, the biggest thing right now would be to improve relations with Japan, uh, just because they are on the brink of going to war with us, and having another war going at the same time over here seems like it would be not beneficial to us. Uh, some would say counterintuitive, so let's not let that happen. All right. Next turn. Yeah, unfortunately, all of our ships have been uh, removed. The, the game saw fit to to delete every fleet in the game. Where did all these light cruisers and destroy... This is their entire fleet! Where did these guys all come from? 
Holy mother of God, Batman. That is a lot of ships. We lose three transports. Uh, Sweden would like some more, some more, uh, heavy cruisers. That's fine. We did manage to increase our relations with Japan, which is huge for now. Uh, yeah, this needs to be, that is a massive fleet, dude. There's 19 light cruisers, 33 destroyers, and 22 torque boats. If I can intercept that, that'll be huge. <laughs> I know it sounds stupid to try to go at it with a single heavy cruiser, but I have I have a good feeling that we would be able to at least hold our own. Um, but yeah, where are they headed? They're headed to the Black Sea. So these guys are headed for my battleship. Uh, okay, well, in that case, let's just uh, hold. Hold here in the, the Mediterranean. Put yourself between them and the battleship and see if we can't intercept them. Uh, power projection standpoint, I mean, the Russians have a lot more power projection here because they just have more ships. But uh, they are smaller, so I'm not as worried. Should be able to kill them. Uh, we are losing $7.6 million per turn, which is definitely not ideal. Um, but that's what happens when you send your fleet into action. Ten more months to build the new heavy cruisers. Glad I decided to build six of them. Conquest, still probably going to lose this, but hopefully we get lucky and we take the, that anyway. That would be nice. But as soon as that clears up, we're sending them over to the Mediterranean. What up, Gavin? Will we ever see a Russian campaign? Probably. Uh, I'm just going through the different nations that I haven't played so far. So, yeah, there's absolutely a chance that we play Russian. And we actually took it. 45%. Okay, so we had an 87% chance to take it the first time, and we failed. We had a 45% chance to take it this time, and we, we succeeded. <laughs> that is just, that is this game in a nutshell right there. All right, let's, let's bring these guys over. Send them into the Black Sea. So we have two torpedo boats there. We have a battleship and a heavy cruiser or a light cruiser there. Let's. They are apparently coming out. So we're going to let Espana here represent. And then this, of course, is the super fleet that came over. So we've got reinforcements on the way. Uh, let's go ahead and click invade here. Uh, no, we won't invade. We're, we're still going to protect because we do have transports that will be coming down through here, right? That makes sense. Uh, they do have Oman that I completely forgot about. So we got to keep an eye on that. We don't really have anything protecting our transports here. So maybe a good idea to take one of our heavy cruisers, maybe uh, the Chunky Monkey, and send it over to Mogadishu. To help protect for now. And then we can click on that and set them to protect. Basically, we got to protect our transports for every everything we can. Like, legitimately have to. We also should probably crank that up so that we're continuing to build new transports as they inevitably end up getting sunk. Alright, let's keep it going. I would expect a battle in the near future. Potentially a ridiculous battle in the near future. The Empire of Japan so far observes the war, but slowly mobilizes its forces against us. Let's hope that they don't. All right, so the Espana is, in fact, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the ridiculous fleet, and they are bringing a battleship with 12.4-inch guns. That could be a problem. Uh, fighting all of these cruisers and stuff is one thing. Fighting all of them plus the battleship is a whole other ballgame. Uh, that is a 14,000 ton. I mean, we still are roughly similar in terms of tonnage. Uh, it's 12.4 inch guns. Are they going to be that much more effective against us versus our 10 inch guns versus them? I mean, only time will tell. But all of these little ships are going to be a potential problem for us for sure. 
So this is about to get real, folks. Finally, it's only taken us two and a half hours of this, uh, this particular stream to get into a battle, but we are officially in a battle with the Russians. And we have the potential to wipe out a ridiculous number of Russian ships. This will also be the very first time we get to see our brand new battleships in action. Which also means that we're going to have cadet crews, which is not ideal. So, for those of you wondering who didn't get to see the beginning of the, the stream, there has been some sort of update conflict between the mod and the game, and it deleted all of the nation's navies. Like, literally every nation in the game lost their navy all at the same time uh, before we could start this stream today. So... We we kind of uh, change we we kind of added a little bit of lore to it about the Great Reset and all of that, so it should be should be pretty interesting. Uh, just from a hull standpoint, it looks like we are definitely running the uh, more advanced hull compared to these guys. Uh, but again, it's just a war of attrition here. You got one battleship versus a battleship, twenty light cruisers, thirty three destroyers, and twenty four torpedo boats. That is absurd. I think we can all agree. Turn that off. This will definitely be one of those situations where when we engage, we immediately start to uh, try to avoid getting into too much trouble here. But the Espana, we, we believe in you. I am fully, fully under the uh, impression that I, I can handle this. Okay, they're already firing on us. Okay. And out of the smoke appears a ginormous fleet of Russian ships, the likes of which nobody has ever seen before. Espana, God help us. We must not get surrounded. Okay, first kill goes to the Espana. Target the closest ships, please. Holy mother of God, what a fleet. <laughs> Oh, this is bad. This is real bad. Oh, we are so dead. I don't think there's any way we survive this. It doesn't mean we will give up. Yeah, I think this is the death of the Espana. Holy mother of God. We can't even target the enemy at the moment. This hurts. Don't 
Don't you worry, Espana. You will be avenged. You will be avenged, Espana. This did not... This did, yeah, this did not go well. We sank five of them to their one of us. But they sank a battleship and we sank a bunch of little boats. All right, well, we're in trouble. <laughs> we're in trouble. Uh, they definitely have way too many little boats. I wouldn't say necessarily back to the drawing board completely, but I mean, you just can't. We can't allow ourselves to get attacked by that many ships all at the same time. For sure. But I mean, we, we sank five of them and we damaged two more before we were taken out. Uh, and now we have one of their battleships versus our heavy cruiser. And that's definitely not what I would call an ideal fight. All right, we'll give it a shot. That's all we can do, right? All right, speed up. Uh, I'm actually considering just turning and running here. Because I can guarantee that this battleship is capable of hitting us hard, if it hits us. We know that our torps can only reach out to 1.8 kilometers. We just took a partial pin from the 12 inch guns. How fast is this heavy or this battleship capable of going? This battleship's capable of matching us speed wise. All right, we have no choice. We have no choice. Oh my God, that hurt. That hurt. The worst part is that's gonna slow, yeah, he's just gonna annihilate us. Good God, dude. He, he's capable of going the same speed as our heavy cruisers. Dude, we're in trouble. <laughs> we are in big trouble. Like, we are just getting annihilated. Definitely was not our best choice to immediately go after that super fleet. Definitely regretting that. Uh, war is not going well. Uh, we're going to continue to fight. Like, we're, we're going to try. That is unbelievable. Okay. Um, is this our main fleet? No. Where, where is our fleet? You're, you're here? Okay. You're going to need to come through and, and help us here. You're not going up into the Black Sea. Is anybody else up in the Black Sea currently? No. Dude, the, the super fleet. Like, how do they get this many ships in one fleet? Like, they shouldn't have that amount of, like, uh, capacity for their fleet. Like, like in terms of, like, uh, what do you call it? I, I forget what it's called. Command capacity or whatever. Command points. Like, they shouldn't be able to put 100 ships in one fleet.
That is definitely a problem. Okay, um... And on top of that, we're still losing a bunch of money, which is even, even worse. Arguably. Oof. Let's get the, get this going. I mean, we're still building new ships. We just can't be losing them the way we are. Um, where is this currently? This is in Manila. All right, so we have eight months until the new heavy cruisers come online. Yeah. Definitely was not a good idea to send our, our one battleship that we currently had away to the Black Sea to poke the nest, knowing that there was a super fleet there. Such a dumb idea. Why'd I do that? All right. Um, in the meantime, let's pull you guys back together. Try to bring some sort of fleet presence together. Dude, how did they build so many ships so quickly, man? They weren't that big. Now they got four freaking battleships, 23 light cruisers, 31 destroyers, and 28 torpedo boats. Like, their ability to rebuild is absurd compared to mine. Like, I just cannot build that many ships. Ah. <sighs> All right, well, we know that they have the ability to build a bigger battleship now, so maybe it's time to build a battleship killer. A battleship killer the likes this world has never seen. Let's go standard crew quarters. Um, main guns. I am very much considering throwing 16-inch guns on this thing right now. I literally can't. <laughs> you can't fit a 16-inch turret in there. I can put it at the back. We have the 12-inch Mark 1s. The fact that I can't put this on here is triggering me so bad. And it won't let me put a barbette on it either. Yeah, it's, the problem is they're faster than us. Like, they, we couldn't we couldn't keep our distance at all. But, uh, yeah, clearly clearly our heavy cruisers versus a battleship, that was not going to work. I didn't think it would, but I couldn't run away from him because those old heavy cruisers just didn't have the speed. Our newer heavy cruisers would have been able to dictate the engagement there. We'd have been able to disengage. But our, our, our first heavy cruisers, not so much. Uh, how do I want to approach this? Could throw a 13-inch gun on here. I don't know. I feel like the 10-inch guns would be plenty to kill the battleship. But I don't I don't feel like we, we can do anything with this hull. So I think we just have to hold. 
think we just have to hold. We we can't improve over what we currently have enough to warrant a new design. Like our previous design battleship should be fully capable of dealing with a battleship. We just can't allow it to get surrounded by little turd bur turd burglars. Like we just don't have enough firepower to deal with that many ships all at the same time. Um That being said, we do still have the Ninitos. That would take 14 months to build. Have quite a bit of firepower. Are cheaper to make. Let's build one. Um, you will be at Barcelona. How are we doing here? So seven months, this will be done. This is Indonesia. I hate to do it to you, Indonesia, but I'm going to have to cancel the sale. Sorry. I'm sure you understand. And I'm sure, I'm sure the Swedish will as well, but I can't. Okay. So let's put these guys all at Barcelona. That'll get us a little bit, uh, more firepower into the fight a little sooner instead of selling those ships to our allies. That'll give us three Nanito class in the next over the course of the next year, which hopefully will will do us some good. Financially, we're struggling. I mean, there's no doubt about that. We are struggling financially. And they are winning the war handily, so we're going to have to try to flip that somehow. God, I don't understand how they got such a super fleet all of a sudden. And the fact that they have so many battleships, too, is disconcerting, to say the least. All right, next turn. What up, Kevin? How's it going? Yeah, the battle cruiser and all of our ships leading up to this uh, this stream all got zapped out of existence by the game. It just they all disappeared. Sweden would order another Vingador class battleship. Um, I can't right now. I can't. Sweden. Yeah, I was going to say they're going to cancel their alliance with us. I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. So now we have no allies left. My luck, they'll join the goddamn Russians and then I'll have to fight my own ships on top of that. Oh, well, it is what it is. All right, what are you? One battleship, one battleship. So you guys are all headed to the Black Sea. They seem to have at least broken up their, their super fleet for the moment. Okay, you guys are here. I do want to try to get up in here into the Black Sea and bait somebody into fighting us. Okay, you guys should be in a protect situation. Um, we did lose one of our heavy cruisers that was protecting out here. So probably ought to take the San Martin bring back over here see if we can't encounter those guys we gotta we gotta find fights that are a little bit more on our term and we can't be just walking into ambushes like we just did that was a huge misplay on our part and they have two battleships up here 
Dude, they, they, how are they building these ships so fast? Like, this is ridiculous. They now have six battleships. They are just spawning a fleet out of nowhere, seemingly. This is ridiculous. Oh, we are in trouble. I mean, this still offers us a good chance to potentially do some good things, but good lord, man. Their fleet has just, like, quadrupled in size. They're up to 188,000 tons with 59 ships, including six battleships now. We're in trouble. <laughs> I think I think I think this might be a war that we actually end up losing, uh, which is rare for us. So we're losing so much money too. France and Italy are now at war as well. Their super fleet is attacking our transports. Nothing I can do about that. Italians are now trying to provoke us. Dude, they gotta split this fleet up. How am I supposed to fight that? Like, legitimately, how am I supposed to fight that? I mean, I could maybe start to pick at it with these guys, but again, we're just going to end up in a situation where we get surrounded and killed. We can't run from their battleship. Their battleships are fast, as fast or faster than my, my heavy cruisers are. And now they've put two battleships together here. So I don't even have the advantage if I were to try to cap, cap one of their battleships by itself. This is, this is no bueno. Alright, well, get back out of there. Come back over here and try to, like, salvage some semblance of protecting the homeland, I guess. This is a disaster. Dude, that super fleet is going to be a problem. Like, the only chance that we have against that super fleet is to, like, start to slowly knock out the smaller ships. Like, we're not even going to be able to even engage the big ship anytime soon. But the problem is, every time we engage this fleet, we're probably going to lose the ships that engage it. Because they're going to be able to, they're going to be able to swarm us. We just don't have the fire rate to be able to take down those ships quick enough. I don't know, man. I don't know. We're in a conundrum, I think, is the, the proper turn for the this war. And we're losing so much money because of it. All right, well, these guys, because they canceled, I, I guess the good news is because they canceled their um, purchases with us, their trade agreement, I guess we've got three more heavy cruisers to choose, so we're probably going to put all of these at Barcelona. Or at least in the neighborhood. Um, let's put them in Malaga. Oof. If you can't win the war, then win the peace. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a thing that we're going to have to start looking into, for sure. They signed with the Germans. The French are attacking the Italians.
I guess the next thing I could potentially try would be to merge these two fleets and then try to bait these guys into a fight where we can take out a lot of the small craft with firepower question mark the other side of things is we're losing our transports pretty quickly because of that fleet um we're losing a ton of money. We can hold for a little while. Get friendly with France? Yeah, but if we if we get friendly with France, then we're in a war with Italy again. And then we're still fighting everybody at the same time. I'm going to continue to fight. I think, I think we can pull this back. Or at least I'm going to try. I mean, they are on friendly terms with us, so maybe we can buddy up to them a little bit. We definitely need to find some sort of friends out here in the world, for sure. For sure. All right, so we have, a, we have successfully merged these fleets, which at least gives us a chance to potentially do something. Their super fleet, again, has kind of broken up a little bit here. I'm going to go over here to the Black Sea and set ourselves up to try to, like, do some invading. We'll see. I don't want to fight everything at one time, but if I can start to make a dent, I think we got a chance. And they just keep teleporting their ships. Like, when we have ships here, these guys all disappear. And we, we just keep trading, trading places. It's so annoying. All right, well, we'll see how that goes next turn. Still got this heavy cruiser trying to defend the Bay of Biscay. We do have a heavy cruiser over here, the Purification in Habana. So we still have a presence over here. It's not much of a presence. Oh, my God, and they're over here, too. Screw it. You are to... Set sail and he engaged that destroyer immediately. We cannot allow them to sit in the Caribbean and, and knock out our transports there as well. And this guy is heading to Southeast Asia. That's the other thing we need to start looking at. I mean, in theory, if we send these guys up here, set them on a invasion course, hopefully that means we can take out some of their transports and start to really put, put the squeeze on their economy a little bit. But let's be honest, any, any war of attrition, we're losing. Like, it's not even, it's not even a viable option at this point. We're simply losing way too much money. <laughs> Raid and pillage. Eh, 
And they've discovered some oil for fun. Okay, let's keep keep buttering up um, the French if we can. All right, we have a fleet right next to their fleet. Just going to leave them there for the moment. See if we can generate an encounter. These guys are headed to the Black Sea. Okay. Let's keep it going. What up, Michael? We're not ready to call it yet, but unrest is starting to get pretty high too. We need to we need to engage and win a fight here somewhere. All right, let's take one of these heavy cruisers. Over there. Jesus. They have literally just taken their entire fleet and sent it straight over to the Sea of Japan. Oh, brother. Well, we're definitely poking the hornet's nest. But while they're out, now is our chance to uh, potentially cause some trouble over here. They're going to send all of their battleships away. Now is our chance. So uh, let's go ahead and... Okay, well, that guy's splitting up. We're going to have to split the rest of these up over time. What do you have? Do you have anything? You do not. You got a heavy cruiser there. Let's send you up to Kronstadt. I know it's a long ways away from home. But if we set you to invade, it could help us. Basically, we're just trying to split these guys up. Like, if, they, if they're going to go for a war all the way around the world, like that's going to be beneficial to us because it's going to break their fleets up. Okay, protect. There's nobody currently here, but we'll just hold for now. Um, everybody else should be okay. This guy. Definitely do not want you to pop out just yet, because that's death. All right. Let's keep it going. Uh, the one thing I didn't look at. Yeah, our freaking GDP has taken a nasty hit. Alright, next turn. What up, Dr. Van Gelder? How's it going? Richard, appreciate you dropping in. Okay, these guys are about to go through our waters. So we still got a little bit of time before they get there. This guy is getting up into territory to where he can potentially do some damage to transports. These guys are just kind of hanging around. 
So let's move them over into the Black Sea. Set you guys to invade. Okay, you're already set to invade. Set you to... Okay. All right, hopefully... We can start to make an impact somewhere during this war. No legends this week. I mean, I've been posting videos every day this week. I just didn't stream it. I, I was sick Wednesday and Thursday, so um, I just didn't feel like streaming. War has erupted between the French and the Russians. Well, in theory, that helps me out. In theory, that helps me out. Um, France, you guys, you guys like us, right? Like common enemy and all that. Just saying. Like we have a common enemy. I know we don't have the most powerful navy in the world, but uh, we can at least annoy the shit out of them. Okay. We're at least making money all of a sudden. So I'm assuming some of our ships are finished building. That's huge. Okay. So we'll let them get their... Uh... Do we not have... Yeah, we don't have the crew pool. So we need to actually go back to increase our crew training real quick. Get as many crew as possible. Okay, next turn. Winning every match you played tonight, nice. Later, Joey. Good luck, man. Appreciate you dropping in. Dude, the Russians are going to war with everybody right now. This is, like, perfect for us, I guess. All right, so from a fleet standpoint, we should be getting our crews. Okay. Politics, can't improve relations with them. Let's go ahead and improve relations with the British. Okay. Research is awful. We're losing too much money. But it is what it is. Okay, so these guys are going to be mostly in Barcelona. Okay, so now we're starting. Now we're starting to get some, some ships again. All right, let's move these guys up. Um, okay, we got to wait for these guys. I think we'll wait and we'll have the uh, other battleship do its own thing. We have these three heavy cruisers. We can move them up here to... La Coruña.
All right, so power projection-wise, I mean, we have more power projection than they do up here in the Seal of the Hots. So we should be able to knock out transports that way. If we look, Russian army logistics is at 100%, which is not ideal. Their GDP is $126 billion. Look at the GDP difference between me and everybody else. $250 billion, $126 billion, $110 billion, $74 billion, $116 billion, $68 billion, $17 billion is the closest to us. We're at $15 billion. U.S., $97.5 billion. Italians, $27.9 billion. We just don't have the money, man. It's rough. All right, well... That is what it is. Let's keep going. Dr. Ghost coming in re-upping for 23 months. Thank you so much and welcome to the stream. Appreciate you. Yeah, one more one more month until two years, man. You demand that I make you a ship class and name the Mendoza. Please and thank you. Your birthday was yesterday? Well, happy birthday, man. We'll see what we can do. Rip Austro-Hungary. They're going to get the full force of the Russian Empire's army, it seems. Set these guys to invade. All right, let's set the Chunky Monkey out here as well. Set him to invade. Basically, we just want to do everything we can to surround them right now. Still commissioning. We are losing a lot of money per turn, though. Okay. Should be able to drop our crew training budget down a little bit. And then we'll have to drop this down a little bit as well. All right, well, let's keep it going. Oh, what do we got up here? Destroyer, destroyer, heavy cruiser. I think the San Martin could take him. Let's get him over there. All right. Your goal here will be to protect our transports. Okay, next turn. Got a revolution in uh, northern Egypt, it looks. All right. Next turn. Okay, so these guys are starting to attack out here in the North Atlantic. Can I separate these two cruisers? Move one of them south.
I love that their guys in, end up attacking transports all the time. I'm literally set to invade. I'm parked inside their freaking territorial waters with a huge advantage. And yet, you don't see me knocking out transports. For whatever reason. Like, they get one destroyer anywhere near my ships, or anywhere near my coast, and they, they get to immediately start killing transports. And the fact that we can't seem to, like, engage any of them is really obnoxious as well. Let's take these guys. Let's keep them there. Let's see if we can't bring these guys down. Got a heavy, or a light cruiser, a couple of light cruisers. Destroyer. Where are their ships all of a sudden? Heavy cruiser. Yeah, I don't know where all their ships disappeared to. Maybe move over that direction, see if we can't engage them. Russia trying to attack China. Problem is, if we can't find a goddamn engagement in the near future, like, we're just going to be sitting here with our thumb up our ass. Like, come on, man. I need to start clawing some of this war score back. Okay, there's a heavy cruiser there. Got a destroyer coming out of the north. Heavy cruiser also coming out of the north. Okay, next turn. You love the daring? It's a good ship. Oh, continue the fight. Ah, oh, finally, we have a heavy cruiser fight. Okay, well, they have 9-inch guns, which is a little scary. They have a top speed of 18.3 knots, so we're technically faster. These are our brand new... Heavy cruisers. Okay, we got 9-inch guns, too. I forgot about that. We did go for the bigger guns. So, honestly, we should have the, the advantage here. We're a bigger, bigger heavy cruiser. So, we should have the advantage in this fight. Speed up time. The Cardinal Cisneros. Be spotted to the southwest. Okay. We're already being shot at. Wait, we also decided to go with SAP, didn't we? Yeah, so this will be our first test to see what the SAP is like. Our 
commercial pen. God, our accuracy sucks. And I love how every time they pull the trigger, they're hitting us. They have trained crews. This is silly, man. Can we hit the target? Lord have mercy. Dude, every shot that they take is perfectly accurate, and my shots are just like all over the place. And of course, catches me while I'm turning away. It's the pin. They don't miss. They don't miss. Oh, uh, this is so, so annoying. He only has armor piercing left with his main guns. I can't seem to get away from him either. The flooding that he caused has slowed me down enough that he's actually faster than me. Which is highly annoying.
Dude, he's just 100% accurate. Every shot. Like, I've landed nine total hits for 650 whole damage. He's landed 35 for 6,000. be a different story if I could actually hit the fucking target, but I can't. And he's not going to let me disappear or disengage, so I might as well just go straight at him. Then he'll just turn and run. And that's what the AI does in this game. They're like, oh, yeah, he's just going to... And of course he hits. Right? Doesn't matter what I do to change course, he's going to land every shot. Finally hit him back. Swing and a miss. Shocker. He's also reloading his gun so much faster than me. And he's staying just outside of torque range. And now he somehow manages to do what? Aft belt penetration by shooting through here. Whatever, game. Alright, it's pretty obvious we're gonna lose this. Like, this is just annoying at this point. The game is just not allowing me to do anything. We're at such a huge fucking disadvantage. Because of our lack of money, man. Like, we, we just don't have it. We don't have anything. We don't have anything that we can, like, stand on and say that this is what we've got. Like, we have nothing. They have the numbers advantage. They have the ability to hit every fucking target. They have the ability to, like, outrun us. They have the ability to survive us. Like, we don't have anything in our Navy currently that is capable of standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with anything. That is not ideal. Like, I didn't realize how strong or how hard this was going to be fucking to, to do what we got to do. And, of course, now these guys all doubled back and now they just appear. They were over in Asia like two months ago, but now they're all the, all the way back here and they're going to fucking... All right, we got to withdraw. It's not going to let me withdraw. Fucking hell, man. Auto resolve it. Down we go, but at least we take a couple of them with us, right? Fucking hell. This is fucking obnoxious. I didn't realize just how fucking difficult this playthrough was going to be. Like, the fact that you have zero money. None. You don't have anything. You can't sustain even the smallest fucking navy. Like, the tiniest fucking navy. You can't sustain shit. You can't research anything. So you're fucking behind from the get-go. You have no, no, tr no crew training. Like, you just can't do anything. Like, they legitimately have nothing to stand on. There isn't a single redeeming feature of the of this playthrough so far. Like, I can't get a single, like, caveat of potential out of these guys. Like, I just can't hit anything. They're slaughtering us everywhere we fucking go. This is ridiculous. Oh, man. Like, we can't do anything, man. I 
I think the only thing that we have, the only option that we have at this point would be to try to force like specific tech. Like that is the only thing that we have optional at this point. So I think going for like battleships and rangefinders, that is our only option at this point. Clearly our heavy cruisers can't stand toe to toe with them. Clearly our freaking, uh, you know, torpedoes and stuff. We don't have the range to, to deal with them. So like trying to force battleships out that are capable of hitting the targets is going to be our only option, I think. Because clearly our smaller ships can't stand toe to toe with them anymore. Like if, if the game hadn't wiped out everybody and made us all quote unquote even so that everybody that has a better tech level than me ends up with ridiculous ships that I can't fucking fight toe to toe. Like maybe we had a chance, but given the fact that they wiped our entire goddamn Navy out, like we're just stuck. We have nothing. We have nothing that we can do. It is rough out here. Like, I just don't know what we need to do. I just don't feel like we're going to have any chance whatsoever. It is actually hopeless. And it feels real bad. Feels real bad. Send these heavy cruisers back over here as well. Why did they do that? Did the British, like, shut Gibraltar to us? Surely not. That's, that's a bug. We're on, like, friendly terms with Britain. I don't know why they would potentially try to shut Gibraltar on us. This is rough, man. Let's keep trying to improve relations with France. Of course, I know what will happen. As soon as we get to an alliance with these guys, we'll have an alliance for one month, and then they'll break the alliance. Because that's what happens every time I get in an alliance with anybody in this game. They're like, oh, yeah, our alliance, oh, screw you. We don't like you. Alliances are jokes in this game. They never stay. I just don't know what we can do, boys. I think we're in trouble. Like, normally we would have something. Just something. But we have nothing, man. We have not a single thing to stand on where we can go, we can do this. Like, we have no advantage. None. We don't have money. We don't have technology. We don't have anything. We are just hopeless. Like, the only option I feel like I have at this point would be to take my entire freaking, like, fleet and, uh, like, put them in port and just be diplomatic for the rest of the playthrough. Because I have no chance of building this navy. We just, we have nothing. What up, Cody? Trained crews versus not trained. I mean, there's nothing I can do. I don't have the money to train crews. I don't have the money to build ships. I don't have the money to do anything. Like, these guys are the, the poorest goddamn country I've ever played as. Ain't no wonder they always get their ass kicked when we play in any other campaign. Like, not even the, not in, not even the AI, the cheats can fucking pull this shit out. How the hell am I supposed to? Okay, we've got an alliance with, with France. So there's that, for the moment. I'm sure that'll last about three days. Move you guys back up here. We've got this battleship by itself, which is not ideal. 
this battleship and two heavy cruisers there. These guys are still attacking. The worst part is, like, I can't seem to get into an engagement where we can, like, come out on top with, with Russia right now. Like, every engagement that we've been in has just been a failure. Every one of them. So, we'll just keep trying. We'll keep trying to push for battleships and range fighters so that we can start to hit the targets because this is ridiculous so far. We're so far behind in tech, it's stupid. Look, they they don't have to do anything, and they immediately are able to take out our transports. That's the other thing. I've had ships parked all over the fucking co or all over the globe, outside of every goddamn port that they have. I can't get a fucking encounter with transports to save my life. Every time they sail anybody within fucking 500 miles of my coast, they, they get an encounter. Every time. So they're fucking annihilating my transports, despite the fact that I have people that are supposed to fucking defend shit. And I can't do the same to them. My ships just never fucking attack anything. They just sit here. This guy's been in the Black Sea for how long? Not a single fucking transport has been shot down. None. Done. Just sits there. He's on invade. Doesn't actually fucking do anything. Just sits there. Every time I move anywhere near them, they just teleport away. So I can't ever force a fucking engagement in this game. This is just one of the things that drives me fucking crazy. Is that I am not allowed to, like, actually force anything to happen in this game. Like, I can't. I, I can put my fucking pieces anywhere on the map I want. But at the end of the day, if the fucking game doesn't allow you to actually do anything with those pieces, you're just sitting around with your thumb up your ass. Like, yes, I have a fucking two heavy cruiser fleet right here. They have a single heavy cruiser here. In theory, I should be able to walk up and engage these guys, right? Like, I should be able to just go, hey, fight this motherfucker. But it won't. The game won't let you. Right? They'll fucking teleport that motherfucker out the way. He'll disappear to some, some other location. Just randomly. This guy, up here in the north, been sitting outside this port this whole time. Ain't fucking done a damn thing. He's been on invade the whole fucking time. Ain't done nothing. Hasn't encountered anything. They have heavy cruisers here, light cruisers, destroyers, all the things. Can't encounter anything. Like, it, this game drives me fucking crazy. Because it, it, it acts like it's a fucking strategy game. But there's no fucking strategy to it. Because no matter how much you try to fucking do, the game will not allow you to do what you want to do. It is all fucking automatic. It's all RNG. Whether or not you get any fucking encounters, whatever. Like, doesn't matter. Park them right outside the fucking port. Invasion, nothing. Don't attack any fucking transports. Can't fucking do anything. Can't attack them. They just sit there the entire time staring at you through the fucking window. And you can't do anything. It's infuriating. Like, where is my fucking button for going, okay... Hey, I'm a fucking admiral. I command your fucking fleet to attack this motherfucker. Where is that button? Developers, it was five, five years. Five years. Where is the fucking button where I go, okay, I have two heavy cruisers. There's one light cru or one heavy cruiser. That's a tactical advantage in my favor. I'd like to exploit that. Let me just fucking attack the man. Oh no, you can sail near them and pray to God they don't teleport away. Maybe you'll get lucky and you'll actually force an engagement, but I doubt it. More than likely, this guy will just go, Bloop, I'm over here now. Sorry. Oh, you moved your ships? I'm back here now. <laughs> this game is so fucking annoying with that shit. It really is. Like, it drives me fucking insane. It drives me fucking insane.
Yeah, War on the Sea is a is like a much better strategy game than this, for sure. Not even close. You have so much more control over your fucking ships and shit. Whereas this game, like, the, the most control you have is building your ships. That's it. Everything else, you've got nothing. You can position them. You can try to do your best. The game will decide whether or not your positioning means anything at all. Like, it is one of the most infuriating things about this game is that you have absolutely zero control over anything in this game except building your ships. That is it. What up, Birdman? Loops, good to see you. It's infuriating, man. Yeah, I gotta pay fucking reparations, right? Sure. Why not? Oh, now they want even more reparations. Oh, yeah. Shocker. I need to reduce the unrest because my fucking unrest is going through the goddamn roof right now. Look at this. And now we finally get a fucking engagement. I try to engage a fucking light cruiser that's all by itself. Can't fucking engage. Suddenly, a super fleet the size of goddamn Texas shows up to fuck us over. Five fucking battleships. 30 goddamn light cruisers and torpedo boats. This is what I get. Like, I can't fucking move my ships around to try to actually engage any fucking specific fleet. But the fucking, the AI will just pop up with an entire fucking super fleet and just fucking try to murder me. And I have no say in it. I have nothing. Nothing I can do about it. Nothing. What up, Jub Jubs? Also, Thor, welcome. I think this is the end of this campaign. I'll be honest. I, I think this might be the last of this campaign. Because I don't, I don't see any way that we win this. There's no chance. Unless we just sit in fucking uh, peacetime and just sit there and and do nothing for 70 years. <laughs> like, that's that's the only hope that we have. Because, like, we can't lose a war if we never start one, right? So if we just stay as Spain the entire time, stay in peacetime, never fucking at try to attack anything, that is our only hope. Look at this. Look at this fleet. Five fucking battleships teleport out of nowhere. 19 fucking light cruisers, a destroyer, and 20 torpedo boats. Wonder how this is gonna go. <sighs> so infuriating. Well, this is only capable of doing 16 knots, so we're gonna find out real soon. All right, let's go ahead and make our turn. As you know damn well, there's about to be 500 little tiny boats pop up out of fucking nowhere. These are just the battleships getting spotted. Watch, first shot hit, no? Surprising. Of course they run into each other. We have no fucking hope here. I need to detach these guys because... These heavy cruisers need to be separate. And of course, they're already landing hits on us. Target the little fuckers that are right here. Stop fucking worrying about every other thing on the fucking planet. Target the little bastards. They're the ones that are going to be the fucking problem initially. Our 
Are these my SAP cruisers? They are. Try armor piercing. I want to see what you can do. We can keep the riffraff at bay. Take out some of these little bastards. I'd feel a lot fucking better about it. What is their torpedo range? 1.4 kilometers. Let me guess, this guy's gonna survive long enough to yellow rush my fucking cruisers with his torpedoes. Despite these guys having torpedoes of their own, they haven't used them. He's gonna launch his torpedoes and murder my fucking cruiser. Because he just doesn't die, right? So far, so good. We're just beginning, though. We are far from out of the fucking struggle. These guys are capable of going much faster than our battleship, so we need to stay close if we can. Turn our battleship away from the main fleet. Turn all targets on the battleship to the little turret burglars, please. They're the ones that's going to murder you. Come on. Okay. that way. Stop trying to avoid, please. Just do what I tell you to, please. Okay, there goes another little turd. Circle the cruisers back again. Battleship. Target this guy, please. We can just keep our distance from the majority of them all at once. We can, we can definitely kill these guys a little at a time. In terms of the battleships, there's not much I can do about that. We just got to deal with what we got in front of us right off the bat. Okay, down he goes. Target the next one, please. As we keep our distance, our secondaries and primaries should be able to deal with these little riffraffs. Then we got to deal with all the light cruisers that are going to be a problem. Okay, here he goes.
gonna torque my freaking cruiser. My cruiser also has torpedoes, but doesn't use them. Just wanna keep pointing that out. Hopefully that's the end of that torpedo boat. Switch targets. So that's all of the fast movers. Their light cruisers are capable of 21.2 knots, so roughly equivalent speed to us. Our battleship is still hanging around. Target the guy that's closest, man. Why the fuck are you trying to target this guy all the way over here? Like, where, where, in what reality does that make any goddamn sense? Everybody target this guy that's the closest. Preferably hitting him would be nice. Come on, baby. There we go. Got a hit and a flood on him. That's a start. This is this is a long ways from over. We got a long ways left in this fight. And we have to play this perfectly or we're gonna die. Okay. Target the next guy, please. This guy should be done, in theory. Apparently not. Okay, there we go. He's definitely done now, surely. So, get targeting the next guy, please. Target the next closest person game! Stop trying to target the people that are so far away. Lord have mercy, you're wasting so much time. There we go. Punish him. There we go. More flooding. Let's go ahead and switch targets to the next guy. Okay. Now that I'm pretty confident that our battleship can handle that, we're going to send these guys over to start dealing with this guy. Our battleship should have no trouble dealing with this guy, in theory. They have the torp range for that. Like, come on. What is their torp range? 3.3 kilometers. Okay, well, given that information, I need to pay more attention to these guys. That's handy, handy information to have realized that they were going to have that much ability to torque us. Oh, no. We just had a torpedo detonation on ours. Oh, uh, look out, Conquistador. Oh, you just barely dodged that one. Crazy mother trucker. All right, target that guy.
Thankfully, their battleships have been so far out of place because these guys have been faster. And we've been able to focus down the smaller targets. Try to keep our distance a little bit here. Huge hit. Love it. Okay, battleships are starting to get in range, which is not ideal. Tar target this guy. He's breaking off to come after you. Target that guy, please. Down goes another light cruiser. Come on, boys. Huge hit. Come on, Ninito. Good hits. He's done. Switch to the Rion. Where's our cruisers? Please target the Rion, please. Okay, they're trying to target me with torpedoes. I just took a nasty hit from a 12-inch gun. If we can all agree, that's not ideal. Come on, San Tomas, or Tomas. Oh, big hit. Okay, detach. You retreat, please. go that way. Now goes the fruit. This has definitely been a much better showing for the Spanish Navy than the previous engagements have been. Problem again is going to come down to being able to disengage because I don't think we will be. Set them to go out that way. Conquistador is going to come back over here, engage these light cruisers. Good hits.
Target this guy, please. I said target this guy. Target this guy, please. God dang it. Hate that. Target that guy, please. Done with a little bit more damage there, not gonna lie. Torpedoes in the water. Should be plenty of range to not have to worry about that. Huge hits. Puts that one down. Which targets? goes down. Let's try to keep our guys somewhat close to one another here. Okay, swing it back around. Trying to regroup our fleet here. What up, uh, Sievert? How's it going? Reed, appreciate you dropping in. We must fight to run away so that we live to run away again. Come on, Conquistador! Torps in the water, torps in the water. Another huge hit. That's the end of him. Switch targets. said that was the end of him and he is not dead yet you trying to make me out to be a liar game yeah look at it look at that bullshit look at it I knew that shit was gonna happen I should have just kept shooting it fucking annoying little bullshit dude was dead to rights and then just fucking miraculously recovers instead of sinking Conquistador. There we go. Good luck recovering from that one, you little douchebag. It's the Mikhail Kuz Kut 
Creature's up. I kept wanting to say Kuznets up. Oh god. Oh god. Look out! Nanito! I wasn't paying attention. Oh god. Oh god. Uh, turn. Things have gotten all kinds of exciting all of a sudden, for all the wrong reasons. I look away for two seconds and all of a sudden the game, like, wants to eat everything. Oh god. Oh god. That torpedo looks pretty good. Slow down. Oh, it blew up. Perfect. Calculate it. Apparently we took some torpedoes or something, because suddenly we're flooding. Let's put these guys back together, please. Oh god. Oh, we don't have any torps. At least the battleships seem to have uh, given up. They're all the way out there. Shit. Look out, Conquistador! Far too close for my comfort, if I'm being honest. Alright, let's turn out that way. Everybody focus this little dirt turd down. got to make sure that we don't end up uh, losing a ship here at all cost. But Liam, Luke, appreciate you guys dropping in. Liam, thank you for uh, re-upping your membership, my dude. Appreciate you. Get a goat in the chat for Liam. The Admiral Grieg goes down. Very nice. Still got a lot of armor piercing left, but they have 12.4 inch guns, and I don't really feel like getting into a fight with them. At least not yet, anyway. Target. Target the light cruiser, please. Let's 
speed up time. The problem that we're going to face here is that... Uh, These battleships can outspeed us. Out of ammo for the five inch guns. Still have six inch guns though. Punching holes in them. At this point, we need to just try to disengage if we can after killing this light cruiser. Another punch hole in that little turret. Hopefully will be the end of him, but we're not going to stop shooting until he dies. Let's go that way. Speed up time. That's a lot of 12 inch shells coming raining in, man. There we go. Down he goes. Beautiful. Oh, it's way too close. Oh, it's way too close. Way too close. Down goes the torpedo boat.
We are doing damage to the little bastards, anyway. That guy should be dead. Let's go ahead and target this guy. Okay. There's another torpedo boat. I mean, so far, so good. We have done everything that we, we could have hoped to expect out of this fight, and then some. We have devastated the Russian Navy, at least from their, their small craft perspective. I mean, we still have to figure out a way to deal with these five fucking battleships on top of one another. Which I'm not 100% certain I couldn't potentially deal with them with these 10-inch guns, to be perfectly honest. Here we go, and a flood. Where did he come from? Ten percent chance to pin. hit on the torpedo boat. I know we're separating our fleet a little bit here, but I need to kind of get the... Uh, Let's go for the Novik here. Okay, that's us hitting them. Let's go for secondaries to target the Novik, please. See if we can't deal with these battleships a little bit. The beauty of our design is we should have a decent angle to fire at these guys. If we can hit them, we should be able to do some damage. Goes a light cruiser. There we go. See what I'm saying? Like if we hit them, like we should be able to put a decent amount of firepower on target. And stay relatively angled doing it. There we go. Come on, Danito. Let's try to close a little bit 
here. These guys are almost out of armor piercing too. Because they've been firing their guns this whole time. From like stupid range that they can't hit us. And for whatever reason, they're still targeting our, our cruisers with their mains, rather than our battleship. And we have the firepower that can we can absolutely take these guys down, if we can hit them. Problem is hitting them right now. Oh, Jesus. Okay, they have, they have switched targets. Another flood. I would love to take down one of these battleships, but I don't think it's going to happen. Alright, let's just turn away. Our cruisers are still getting out of the fight, so we're good there. Let's just down to Nanito. if we can. This guy's probably the one spotting us right now. So if we can get rid of him, that'd be huge. Still got a lot of a lot of shells on board this ship. That was the whole purpose of this ship. That's why we opted for the wing turrets and everything. got decent armor protection, but I don't really want to find out whether or not it can handle the 12-inch guns. We got a flood. Been a doozy of a fight. relatively minor damage all things considering like yeah our cruisers took a little bit of damage but overall ooh, that looked like it was gonna be bad look like we're gonna get this kill before the game ends we're at 17 minutes left in this fight
right now, I just feel like we're one one bad salvo from getting absolutely obliterated. Got another flood. the hit that I was worried about. God dang it, man. One hit. And dead. Rip to the Nanito. And that probably just cost us this fight. This was going to be a victory for us. It still is a victory for us. But losing the Nanito there at the end is just sad. Ah, it's so frustrating. I knew it was going to happen. And we were so close to finishing out that battle, I just could not break contact, man. I could not get away from them. They were just faster than me. But they still have all five of their battleships, but we did sink 23 ships. We lost a battleship to their 23 ships, including the majority of their light cruisers. Ah, sadness. So close. The problem is, like, it isn't so much like that we lost a ship. It's that we lose a ship and it hurts so much more than when they lose a ship. The most incompetent Navy in history is Spain. I don't know about that. Ugh. Sadness. Rip to the Nanito, unfortunately. Put up a hell of a fight, though. And with that one battle, we have now managed to turn the uh, the war into our favor. It's only just, but we have brought the war back from, from complete and utter disrespect and, and defeat to suddenly being on even terms again. All right, let's get these two heavy cruisers out of there. Let's go reunite them with the battleship that's over here, the Santa Rosa. Let's bring these guys down. Again, these guys are just sitting here, just watching everybody sail past them. All right. Well, I feel a little bit better after that. Despite losing a battleship, we lost a battleship, but sank a huge number of them in the process. So that is a win for me considering how bad this has been going so far. They are repairing seven vessels now. And they currently have 79 ships in their fleet. So we got a long ways to go, boys. It's been a, been a doozy of an episode for sure. Ups and downs across the board. But we have, we have a plan. We are working on rangefinders and battleship design to help us get propelled into the future i actually want to push the heavy cruiser design as well uh but we will wrap up 1904 here and see how things go every battle requires sacrifice yes but the the difference is the 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 pain that the sacrifice is for us because we have so so little like every sacrifice we make is devastating we just don't have the money to be able to replenish the things that we lose as quickly as we lose them. U.S. and China are now fighting.
Okay. We are at least making some money, which is something we can't say happens very often. So we'll keep pushing up the budget a little bit at a time. Go to like 60%. I think it's probably a good idea to start building our next upgrade to our shipyard as well. Let's go ahead and do that. That'll take us up to a 36,000 ton shipyard. It'll take two years to do it. We're losing $15 million per month now. Jesus, man. It gets so expensive so quickly. If we can force another engagement where we have the advantage and we can flip this war score a little bit more, I feel much better about it. Let's put these guys down there and see if we can't force that engagement. these guys out a little bit further if we can force another engagement in our favor uh, we could easily take this war because of one decisive battle so we will keep trying all right it is officially January of 1905 We can, we can build a 10,000 ton heavy cruiser now. So we're definitely going to look into that. Um, politics with Britain. How are we looking? Let's go ahead and try to improve relations there as, as well. Um, losing a crap ton of money. We do have another battleship here. Take that up there. Where do we have some cruisers? The Philippines. Mm, could bring these guys out. For now, though, I think we're fine. Let's trade one of these. Send one of these over here to uh, do the Sant Cristo. He can join up with that battleship on his way. Still a Russian fleet right there, though. Why do I have a feeling that that Russian fleet's going to attack that one battleship that's all by itself? Uh, stop. Can you can you go over and attack this guy, please? All right, let's pull off the heavy cruiser for now. Uh, one more month for the battleship and uh, eight months for the range finders. So let's see what we can do here. How much is considerable? Fifty-eight million dollars, and minus nine or minus one percent. I can't do that, man. I, I I can't do that. It's just not gonna happen. All right, so we have unlocked some new ship designs. Let's go ahead and do that. We have the semi dreadnought which is this little bath toy.
Uh, it's capable of 18.2 knots. Doesn't offer us a whole lot, to be honest. Doesn't give us any casemates. It doesn't give us a lot of potential. Yeah, I don't think this is going to be a thing, but we'll see what we can do with it. See what we can do with it. I think it was capable of 18.2. Yeah. So, funnels. We can do two funnels. Okay. <clears throat> Still can't put any bar bets on this thing. So I do want to see if we can put the 16-inch uh, guns. Oh my god, we can totally do it. This is absurd. Ship is overweight just with those. Look at the size of those guns! Oh my god, it's hilarious. All right. Let's add to the beam. Let's go standard crew quarters. This thing will be a 21,000 ton behemoth. But it is only a gun platform, really. These are 16 inch 50 caliber Mark I turrets. Capable of reaching out to where? How far? 22.9 kilometers. <laughs> that's a bit absurd. For the year, that's for sure. Advanced hydraulic turrets. Semi armor piercing. All right. <clears throat> Let's take these 16 inch guns, drop that armor down a little bit to like 15 inch faceplate armor. Four inch top armor. Um, let's go with a 10 inch barbette. Half half an inch of citadel protection <laughs> This is the most absurd thing I I think I've ever built which is saying something cuz like these guns have no purpose or no business being on something this small We do need to have some secondaries though so let's go with uh Probably six inch secondaries. Could go seven inch, potentially. Oh my god, they actually fit. They actually fit. What is this world coming to? You can't let me do this.
I can put two inch guns on top of them? Really? Oh my god. Totally can. I don't know why I would need to. But I can do it. Okay, there are no more casemates. Says I could potentially put them here. These definitely don't fit. Can I slide? That is not what I wanted. Secondaries, two inch. Yeah, it doesn't fit. Doesn't fit, unfortunately. We are overweight, but... I feel like these 16 inch guns are going to be absolutely ridiculous. All right, so we currently have 13.6 inch main belt armor. We have two inches of deck armor, which should be fine. We can drop the conning tower armor down to like 10 inches, should help a little bit. Still 1,500 tons overweight. <laughs> Can't imagine why. Try that again. Okay. Um. How can we make this work? <laughs> that is the next question. I guess we could drop the armor down on the belt. I really don't want to go much lower than 11 inch. Um, we could definitely drop the turret armor down. Maybe go to like 10 inches. Let's go with like an 8 inch barbette. Take this down to like 2 inches on top. Oh, that gets us closer. Uh, we could drop the range. That'll probably help. Let's look into seeing what we can do in terms of uh, funnels. Oh, we literally can't. It's literally just the one funnel. Set that back there, I guess. We have no options in terms of funnels. It gives us a little bit of protection in terms of, or a little bit of leeway that we can add some armor. So let's bring this up to like six inches, six inches. 
three inch deck seems to be working pretty well for us for now. So let's just keep the three inch going. Um, I would like to have three inches of superstructure at least. Um, still leaves us a decent amount. So let's try eight inches. Okay, get away with that. Okay, nine inches. Okay, 10 inches. Okay, so we can actually get away with an 11 inch main belt, 10 inches fore and aft. So that's decent amount of protection. It's not gonna help much against battleship caliber guns, but hopefully our ability to hit things will improve greatly with these guns. The cost. I didn't even realize the cost. Holy crap, these things are expensive. Oh, Lord have mercy. These 16-inch guns are stupidly expensive. Is it worth it? I mean, we could build one. It would take 17 months to build this thing. Hundred and eight million dollars a piece. That is absurd. Especially for no more than what we have. I kind of want it though. These fifty caliber sixteen inch guns are screaming at me. I could reduce you're you're right, I could. But I kind of like the idea of having a 16-inch gun that's going to be absolutely absurd for the time period especially. Now we are looking at firing semi-armor piercing instead of regular armor piercing. Um because they're so big, I figure they would probably over-penetrate more often than not. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, I don't know if I need the range. But, but the other thing that I get is the accuracy. Like, if I drop the accuracy, how, mu how much is it going to drop? Or if I drop the barrel size, how much is it going to drop the accuracy? So, currently a 50 caliber gun. We can reduce the length of these barrels by only up to 4% anyway. Which would take us down to a 47 caliber gun. Which means that we don't lose much in terms of range or accuracy, actually. Oh, wait. No, I can keep going. Hold that thought. It was just... It was frozen. Okay, so we don't really lose any accuracy at all, really. Lose a little bit of range. We also pick up some reload time. So yeah, maybe going for this would be the best. That's a 40 caliber 16-inch gun, which makes a little bit more sense, but still. I mean, that's still absurdly large for the time period. Like This ship would probably like break itself apart firing these guns. Looks like a glorified bat toy. But that also frees up a little bit of weight as well. So let's say that we are engaging at 10 kilometers currently, right? That seems to be roughly in the neighborhood. So 10 kilometers, we have a base accuracy of 2 point, or no, that's, that's, that's penetration. So 0.8 to 1.1%. That is, that is our accuracy tech currently. Whereas if we increase this to zero, these become 50 caliber. And that goes from 0.8 to 1% to 1.9%. So it almost doubles. Like that's not insignificant. But the reload also goes up quite a bit. Goes from 132 to 200 and something.
All right. Let me know. What, what do you guys think? Do we go with the 50 caliber guns and hope for the accuracy? Or do we uh, stick with the 40 caliber guns and uh, put a little bit more armor on this ship? Because we do have a, about 900 tons to play with or 860 tons to play with. fifties, forties. Like the, the, the good thing about having the 40 caliber guns is that it's a lot lighter. So I can potentially put more, more armor on this thing. Fifties, fifties. Go 45 cal, split the difference. <laughs> now, I'm either going to go with a 40 cal or a 50 cal. 40 cal saves us a little bit of reload. Also allows us to uh, have a... Uh, whatchamacallit? A little bit more armor. You don't need armor if you're killing everything from 18 kilometers. That's You're assuming you hit something at 18 kilometers. Remember, this is very early on. We don't have the tech for that. We have stereoscopic rangefinder ones. At least these do have stereoscopic rangefinders built into the turrets. All right, let's just go for the 50s. If we're going absurd, let's just make it absurd. That being said, look at the price difference. So that is another thing to consider. 89.9 mil for this version versus 108 mil. So we add $20 million for extra little bit of barrel. That seems a bit excessive. Yeah, I think we I think it, I think I just made up my mind. Minus 20% there. We are going to add some extra armor. Um, so that'll help a little bit. Let's go 11 inches, 11 inches, let's go with like 15 inch main belt, All right. I think that'll do. So we managed to save about uh, $10 million by going with the shorter barrels. And we added a lot more armor protection to this thing. Which means we can be a little bit more uh, crazy with it. All right. Now, because this one, I I'm going to go ahead and call this the Mendoza Warfare. Just so that Jonathan can uh, have his ship that he was asking for. It is absurd. We won't be able to build a lot of them. Warefare. <laughs> Somebody forgot how to spell. Try that again. Um, it's absurdly expensive for the year. So we got to be sparing with it. But we'll try it. All right, so, oof. Look at the price difference. Like, we're, we're talking almost double the price of our previous battleships for one battleship. Currently losing $17 million per month. Build one of them for now. 
It's going to take 17 months. And now we're moving. Eh, it's only 22 million. All right, that'll be going to Barcelona. Yo, Joseph, thank you for uh, becoming the newest member on the channel. Welcome to the Spar Sheets, my dude. Again, it's 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 a silly design. Let's be honest. Like this is this is silly. But at this point, I feel like we got to do something crazy, right? Have to. Let's keep trying to get that back up to normal. Uh, crew training is fine. Let's drop this tech budget down a little bit. Research standpoint, we have the battleship design that we've been hurrying and range finders that we've been hurrying. Let's go ahead and pull off of that. Tiburon is Spanish for shark. Yeah, I know uh, Jonathan Mendoza already claimed to have or wanted a ship named after him, so I got him this time. Multiple expansion steam engine is done. Okay, of course it is. Right after I freaking finish my goddamn battleship. China just took Madagascar. Am I crazy? I thought Madagascar was like off. Oh, wait, no. Madagascar is over here. I was like, where's Madagascar? It's off the coast of Africa, not, not Australia. That's New Zealand I was thinking of. <laughs> All right. Um, With everything that's going on, I think we're okay. Take these guys up and see if we can't uh, set on top of these guys. Maybe we can get into a fight. Obviously, if we get into a fight with those battleships, I would likely take the heavy cruiser and sail it away and just use the battleship to fight them and hope for the best. But I definitely want to work on the, the range finders for sure. All right, let's keep going. Our economy is growing, and the government asked your opinion on where to allocate the extra funds. Uh, it's a good time to raise the naval funds, of course. No. Uh, we could speed up the growth by reducing a little of the naval. I don't want to. Could just reduce the unrest. I mean, we don't have that much unrest. So I'd say just go ahead and pump up the, the budget some more, the GDP. And, of course, France broke our alliance. Shocker. I love that these guys just sail right past us. Like we don't even exist. Uh, it's so annoying that they always end up breaking their, their alliances so quickly. Like alliances in this game don't mean crap. They never stick around. I definitely got to figure out something with the uh, finances though. We are losing a boatload of money. Let's do that. That saves us a little bit. Crew training, we should be okay to drop down a little bit here. And then tech budget is the other thing. I 
fact that these guys won't actually fight us. It's just really, really obnoxious. Send these guys into port. Send these guys into port. We'll go ahead and set these guys to port at Mallorca. Basically, I'm just going to try to send some of our fleets back to port to try to save a little bit of money here. Um, we've got these guys here. We can send them into Manila. These guys are headed to the Black Sea. Let's put the Chunky Monkey in their way. Why not? Seems perfectly re reasonable. <clears throat> Alright, next turn. Also, thank you guys for hitting 50 likes. Appreciate you guys. I don't know. I'm getting hungry. I know that. I'm going to be tearing up some food today. I'm getting hungry. In a press conference, journalists asked if the president or the present good financial status of the country is enough to support a war versus the Chinese empire. Uh, we are ready to defend our country against anybody who opposes us. The Navy requires more, which would drop our GDP. Um, I don't see a war happening between our country. This is why naval funds could be reduced in order to strengthen social programs. Again, hoping that this will help bolster our GDP even further. This is going to cost us some money. Masses of dissatisfied uh, pacifists protest and block the roads. Uh, that's expensive. All right. Okay. Can't seem to bait them into fighting me here. They have three battleships there. I don't want that fight. Let's go into the AG in here. All right. Next turn. What up, Bretta? Now, I've been seeing you playing quite a bit lately, Bretta. Hopefully you're having fun with your playthrough. Seems like every time I jump on, uh, I see Bretta playing Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. Also, Battleship, welcome. Hope you're doing well, my dude. I'm assuming you heard we were at war with Russia and decided to come and throw your yourself into the fight. Nine inch Mark threes. Okay, that's actually kind of crazy to get this early on. So nine inch guns are definitely gonna. Oh, Malaysia. Okay, we need a seventeen hundred and eighty four tons. I yeah, I can do that. Where you at? Where you at, Malaysia? Okay, we got a fleet right there. I think we'll just send them on over. That'll be huge for us. Hope that that's enough. Might actually just go ahead and send the Chunky Monkey over there to make sure that they can help as well. Uh, maybe not. Let's hold. 
We'll see how that goes. Hopefully we can take that. That'll be good. Especially considering I know that this area ends up with some oil in the future. Uh, that's the only thing that's going on at the moment. We are still losing a lot of money, which is not ideal. Let's take uh, everybody that's not currently out at sea. Let's put you guys to uh, defend. That saves us quite a bit of money. Still losing a lot, though. It's because we're building this monstrosity. Oh, we're also repairing a couple ships, but we're building this thing. 13 more months of building this thing. Plus, we're still working on our uh, shipyard as well. All right, next turn. Let's keep it going. For sure, Breta, for sure. The Empire of Japan has sent us an ultimatum. Oh, no. I can't. Um, that's $17 million. That's $57 million. Dude, I can't afford this. Why now, man? Dude, we can't afford to go to war with them right now. We just can't. I think for now we 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 have to stop it. Have to. Uh, let's look at the Japanese right now. How are they looking? They have four battleships, 12 heavy cruisers, 19 light cruisers, 22 destroyers, 22 torpedo boats. So, yeah, it's just not a good time to go to war. We're already at war. Have a 100% chance to succeed here, so that's good. So we should get that territory in two months. Go ahead and bring these guys back. Since he's not actually doing anything up there. Of course, all these guys are headed to the Arabian Sea. Okay, well, in that case, let's pop back out of port here. Say hello. I want to fight that fleet right there. I could definitely take that fleet out. 100%. Just got to get them to fight. Appreciate you, Joseph. Like, if we could get one more battle with the Russians and be able to, to swing it in our favor, then we would probably go ahead and call for peace with the Russians at this point. But I can't seem to get them to attack me. Like, they have this fleet right here that I would love to engage. It's a 2v2. They have this little destroyer here. They have a heavy cruiser coming in from the south. We have all these guys that just sail right past us. All right, this should be done in one month. We 
We're officially under a billion dollars in naval funds, which is not ideal. All right, we actually did fight or draw them into a fight. This is awesome. Uh, that is a very large, heavy cruiser with 10 inch guns. So we got to at least uh, respect it. Its name is Boris. Go figure. It is an Ivan Garod class heavy cruiser. But our battleship is a. It's I think this is our regular battleship, so should be pretty solid. They have two heavy cruisers, a light cruiser, and a destroyer. And this is actually one of our battle barges. Okay. Let's get you guys in a division. Uh, let's, let's go with a loose formation. Let's start by turning out here. This is probably a bad idea. Let's focus the bigger ships down, please. Dude, our fucking heavy cruisers are just getting yeeted, dude. It's those 10 inch guns. And they're so accurate. Those those ten inch guns are tearing my fucking cruiser apart. This is ridiculous, dude. Our heavy cruisers are terrible. Let's try to focus down that battleship or that heavy cruiser. Dude, they're just so much more accurate than me. They're so much more accurate. Look at it. Like, we can't do anything against them. Like, they're just able to sit here and just tear us apart. And we can't, we can't even hit them. They've got cruisers that have battleship caliber guns on them. And they're more accurate than we are. We 
can get rid of this light cruiser, I'll feel a little bit better. Our accuracy is so bad, dude. Having to deal with having cadets all the fucking time because we don't have any, like, money to pay our fucking training our troops. And the fact that we're so far behind on tech is just killing us. There we go. That was a good hit. What up, Putin? Welcome. It'd be nice if the guns at the front would aim at this guy and the guns at the rear would aim at these guys. Unfortunately, it doesn't quite work like that. I can't even kill this fucking light cruiser because the game is like, yeah, you're not allowed to hit him. So now we're, we're just done. Oh, this is awful, man. This is awful. All right, I think we need to end this war with the Russians. This is not working. All right, we, we can't get the fights that we want, and then when we do finally get a fight that we could potentially win, we just get annihilated because our tech is so fucking bad, dude. It's so bad. Like, we can't do anything with these ships. We're just getting ripped apart. Agree for peace. Whatever the fucking peace may be, just get it over with. That is so unfortunate, man. Let's get you back over to the Philippines. Let's get you into the dock. This is fucking terrible. This has been the worst, the worst campaign that we've ever, ever played so far. By far. It ain't even close. Like, you just don't have any money to do anything. Like, I'm so far behind in everything that I just have no hope. I just have no hope. Actually, let's take this group here, move them down to Mogadishu. That'll be your new home port.
That way we have presence here. We'll take this heavy cruiser and actually move it to Dakla. Oh, this is frustrating, man. Jude Santiago de Cuba. Oh, it's not even possibly. It is the worst nation in Ultimate Admiral. It ain't even close. Normally by now, I mean, we're at 1905. I have not even been able to get this fucking campaign going yet. Like, there's just no, like, money. There's no money. It was 31 months. It ended up being a stalemate, which I think is generous. Should have, it was technically a loss. So they want war reparations. They're going to take our ships? you got to be fucking kidding me. Oh, hell no. They're taking two territories and all of our ships? I've never lost a war before. This is absurd. Oh my god, we just got fucked so bad. We just got fucked so bad. All right, well, nothing we can do about it. We will rebuild. It's all we can do. Golly, man. Dude, this is this is miserable. This is legitimately miserable. Invested in the the GDP, man. Oh man, this is this is rough. I just can't get this. I can't get this campaign going, man. There's nothing that I can seem to like make happen. We don't have the tr the crew training. We don't have the ability to like legitimately do anything useful. If we go full here, I, I guess I just crank up the tech budget and hope that over time we can start to claw our way from being behind. Because that's our only hope at this point. Like we can't we can't afford another war anytime soon. This is gonna be the most boring goddamn playthrough we've ever had on the channel. It is literally going to be me just sitting here trying to avoid wars for the rest of the game. Like, it's not even, it's not even a question. Like, I, I just can't get anything. We're about to get Coincidence Rangefinders 2. Not that that's really going to help us. just feel like we're so hopeless like we just don't have anything that we can like lean on and then everybody in the world wants to fight us like liter literally the entire world wants to fight us Our entire fleet is gone. <laughs> they stole every ship that we had.
We have two heavy cruisers. Fortunately, we're at least building a battleship. Oof. Turns out losing sucks. Who'd have thunk it? What up, Captain Rob? How's it going? No, I, I definitely saw what you, you wrote. Good lord, man. So for the second time this episode, we are basically completely without a Navy. And the Spanish Empire has uh, changed hands to the right-wing party now and formed a new government. All right, so we managed to at least strengthen a little bit with uh, the Japanese for now. That's going to slow down the war there. Um, let's try to get Germany at least a little bit, maybe. Okay. Let's pull off the rangefinders for now. Let's get the control stations. then I think we need to start looking at potentially going for engines and boilers. Or we go ahead and go for the uh, battleship again. Yeah, we don't really have much of a choice, unfortunately. We're, we're just going to have to play the diplomatic side of things and, and try to build up slowly. I, at this point, if we're able to uh, do anything with this campaign, by the time like it ends, I, I'll be impressed. Like If we can survive to the end of this campaign, I would be impressed. Because right now, it's not looking good for us. The entire world wants to fight us. We don't even have a goddamn navy. I don't know why half of these people are pissed at us. Like, I understand why the Italians would be pissed. I understand why the Russians would be pissed. I even understand why the Japanese would be pissed. But I don't understand why the Germans are pissed off of, at us. I don't understand why everybody else is pissed off at us. The United States? I mean, we haven't been able to claw that shit back since it fucking started. Like, I've, I've been trying to, like, get on their good side for a long time. We don't have the influence to be able to, like, actually make anything happen here. It's awful. Looks like we got an armored cruiser 4 haul coming up. And a modified barbette ship that's going to be obsolete. Get some accuracy through the control stations as well. This is rough, man. Yeah, the bigger it may be, the more it costs. You're not wrong. But also, like, I, I need better battleship hulls to be able to, like, make each ship that I make that much better. If that makes sense.
can't believe the they took freaking Saipan and Guam from us. At least we keep our oil. At least we keep our oil. We just got to keep keep chugging along and hoping for the best. All right, so four months left there. The heavy cruiser just finished. We'll pull off of that. Got some gun techs coming up. Some turret mechanisms coming up. Couldn't really care less about that if I wanted to. Okay, well, in the meantime, let's keep it going. Okay, we did increase our relation with Germany a little bit. So go back to trying to help improve relations with the United States. We just got to try to calm everybody in the world down right now. Because right now we are on the brink of war with like four different countries. And we already seen that we just do not have the capability to go to war with anybody. Like we are not that guy, clearly. Get that done in two months. Why not? They smell weakness, yeah. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. They smell the blood in the water and they all want a piece. Definitely regretting going to war with Russia right now. 18-inch torpedoes. Norway officially signed an agreement. Thank God. Maybe we can start selling some ships and making some money again. Norway, our good friends. Not to be confused with our old friends, the Swedish. Please let us know if you would like any ships. Preferably the bigger the better. All right, so two months until we finish the next hull upgrade for battleships, potentially. One month until we get the hull strengthening project done. Then I think I want to go for... Maybe some light cruiser? No. This will be a 12,000 ton heavy cruiser. Seven months. All right, let's just keep it going. Okay. Um, let's try to improve relations with Japan again. Just trying to back us away from the brink of war for the time being. 
Pretty noble of me, I think. All right, hull strengthening project is done, so we'll get rid of that. We have battle cruiser potential design. Wouldn't be a necessarily a bad thing. Speed that up. We can get that done in eight months. Get a potential battle cruiser hull. Next month we finish this regardless, so let's pull off of that. That'll get that done in seven months. Mm, let's go with that. We are starting to claw our way out of uh, out of our debt situation. It's just taking forever. Yeah, Jeff. So that's kind of what I was going with. Like, we have to get our. Uh, you visit an international weapons exhibition, and journalists ask about our impressions. Um. Some of the weapons were fascinating and superior to our own, so we will consider adding them. Mm, this gives us a bonus influx of cash, so let's just take that. Slight increase to unrest. At a press conference, journalists co question the combat capability. What fleet? The fleet is fully capable. <laughs> For sure. Definitely. Definitely. Okay, we did finish our battleship, though. So there's at least that, that going in our favor. We are losing 4 million per turn, but slowly trying to claw our way back. Uh, improve relations with Germany. Try it again. Okay. Battle cruiser will finish in seven months. The new heavy cruiser hull should finish next month. Let's get rid of the Nininto. So we don't have any of, the, any of them left. Um, what currently do we have? It is just the Mendoza Warfare. So let's get rid of this. The heavy cruisers are both Renaissance. Yep, so that's fine. We have no Conquistadors currently. Could build them, but we're not going to. Okay, let's go uh, new designs. Let's see what we can build. Uh, we didn't we didn't unlock any new battleship halls, unfortunately. So we're not really capable of building anything there. That's new. We do have the Armored Cruiser 4 hull, which is definitely going to be a step up. So definitely going to build a Armored Cruiser. So let's go ahead and max this out. It's 11,000 tons. Set the range down to there. Standard crew quarters should be fine. Okay, we also have Citadel 2 armor, so that's nice. Uh, what is this hull capable of doing in terms of speed? 21 and a half knots. So let's just set it for 21. 21 knots. All right. Tower. Front tower 4. Rear tower 5. Funnels. Can we get away with... We could get away with a triple stacker. OK, 
Okay. Let's throw our coincidence two rangefinders on there. In terms of casemates, I would like to have six inch casemates. And then we can put the five inch casemates here in the middle. Okay. Uh, definitely want some underwater torpedo tubes. Make those 18 inch tubes. Okay. Main guns. Given what we've been up against so far, I really feel like going with uh, 10 or 11 inch guns here. I think I'm going with 11s. Ship is overweight. Shocker. Got a bit of a four weight Fs are offset. Um, on second thought, let's go with the nine inch Mark threes. They should have superior accuracy and reload. So a reload will be 42 seconds for these currently. Let's go ahead and get the enhanced reloading. Advanced hydraulic turrets. So now these will reload in 37.8 seconds. These are also 40 caliber guns. Throw a five inch double barrel or a six inch double barrel on top anywhere? Probably not. We could definitely put it there. Can't put it there though. Okay, what about a five inch? Five inch there. Can't quite get them there, though. It does help with the weight offset a little bit. The modified barbette ship? Uh, I don't think it's actually... It, it became obsolete. That, that's what that was. Like, the, the modified barbette ship was the thing that we were using for, like, the little battle barges. That's barely very very low in the water uh that's that's what the modified barbette ship is let's go one inch of inner belt let's go with like half inch inner deck let's take these down to like nine inches of faceplate armor with a seven inch barbette Go with six inches of casemate. All right. So we've got ballastite, we've got hydric acid. Let's go st standard armor piercing, standard ratio, base fuse AG preferably. Put our 
anti-flash protection on. All right, and with that, we reduce this. Okay, we're still over 5,000 kilometers, which is fine. Gives us a little bit more to play with. I kind of want to go for heavy shells. It's going to cost us a little bit of reload, but should give us a little bit more punching power. Now, how do we want to do armor? Let's get to five inches there. Get to an inch of deck armor. Four inch conning tower. Two inches of superstructure armor. And see if we can't do like three inches, three inches. Okay, nine inches. Okay, so that puts us 88 tons overweight. So eight and a half armor belt with a four and a half, four and a half belt inch of deck armor. Everything else should be decent. For what we can build, I guess. All right, what do we call this thing? The Josephine class? Got gotcha. you. Got you, friend. Yeah, it should be pretty solid all around. Like It's got secondaries to keep things at bay. It's got torpedoes to keep things at bay. It's got the decent 9-inch guns, which are going to be pretty solid for what they are. They're Mark III, so, I mean, they should be decently reloading and accurate. Um, we've got the Coincidence Rangefinder 2s on, so we should be able to at least aim a little bit quicker. So let's go ahead and save the design. Rising like a phoenix, yeah. Pull the funnels and secondary tower closer together. Um, I could potentially have done that. Like you, you could pull these in, but for what it is, you're not really doing anything in terms of maneuvering the weight around. Our balance was relatively decent. It was a little bit four heavy. So we could have pulled this back a little bit, I guess. But part of it for me is aesthetics. I don't like having like, I don't like having big gaps in the middle of the ship. All right. So this will take 14 months to build. All right, let's build, let's start with, I mean, we, we basically want to build six of them. And there goes all of our money again. The Mendoza Warfare is finishing though, so that's good news for us. Everybody should be in limited. 
These guys are in the West Indian Ocean. No, they're they're at port. So we're fine there. Dude, it's just so rough. All right, let's pull off of the heavy cruiser for now since we just came up with that. And we will let everything else go. Losing $20 million per month. Which is absurd when you think about the fact that we have literally no fleet. But part of it is we're building a bigger port. So that's that's a big chunk of our money. What up, Uncle Breda? How's it going? The British offers, but needs considerable. I mean, we don't have the money, man. It's the one thing we don't have. Like, I cannot afford to pay you. All right. Still losing 20 million per month. This needs to be in limited. Should save us a decent amount of money. These guys need to be put in their respective ports. So we'll have two of them at Barcelona. Two of them, Santiago. Two of Manila. And we will call one of them the Phoenix. I know it's technically the P-H-O-E-N-I-X, but... I don't know. This just looks right. What up, Jessica? Welcome. It has been a brutal, brutal stream in terms of uh, how this has been going. Get that going in the right direction. Crew training can be dropped down for now because we have 13,000 people. Just hoping that we can keep going. The Ponce de Leon? No, I definitely do not. Unfortunately, we only have like three ships to our name right now. The Prime Minister believes that our Navy's crew training is inadequate. How do you respond? I agree. But I, uh, at the same time, don't want to reduce my GDP. Okay. 84% done. Once we finish building this, this is going to be a, a big deal in terms of our monthly balance. But we got to finish building it first. OK, 
Okay, four more months for that. Yeah, so basically to start off the stream, I don't know if you guys tuned back in at the beginning. To start the stream, uh, we logged in and all of our boats were gone. Every every nation lost every boat that they had, right? Uh, and then we restarted, or we didn't restart, but I mean, we, we rebuilt our fleet slowly to, to start with. We ended up getting into a war with Russia, getting our ass handed to us at every engagement except one. We had one major victory for us that gave us hope. And then immediately was dashed from us. Um, so yeah, definitely, definitely not an ideal scenario. It's been a rough, rough, rough playthrough so far. Norway has not been ordering ships either, unfortunately. Still losing nineteen million dollars a month. Three more months. Mark two eight inch guns, TNT. Like, I feel like if we were able to like get our tech level somewhat decent, I think we'll have a chance. But until then, like we are just so hopeless. It's ridiculous. Two more months until we could potentially come up with a battle cruiser. If in doubt, go to war with China. Yeah, we, we, we can't go to war with anybody right now. <laughs> There's no chance. And now the Germans are poking us directly. Why? What have we actually done to you? The United States is right on the verge of declaring war on us as well. We haven't done anything to them either. This is absurd. Okay, we're only losing four million now per month. That's a lot lot better to handle. That's four million a month for the next nine months though. That'd be what thirty six million? That'll leave us right around $300 million in the bank. Oof. Struggle bus city. Okay, we should have the new... Yeah, they definitely smell blood in the water. What up, Talking Head? How's it going? Welcome to the stream. Okay, we've officially unlocked the battle cruiser hall.
and we've prolonged our uh, war with the United States a little bit longer by uh, increasing or decreasing tensions between the two countries for the time being. All right, so now that we've done that, let's pull off of that, let everything go normal for the ne next little bit. Uh, how is our situation looking? We're up to a $16.1 billion GDP, so we are still growing a little bit. Slowly. Slowly but surely. Currently building six cruisers. All right, let's go in and see what we can do in terms of uh, potentially coming up with a battle cruiser. Got the battle cruiser one hull. It is capable of 24 and a half knots of top speed. So guess what we're going to set it to? 24.5 knots top speed. Standard crew quarters. Induced boilers, multiple expansion steam engine, unbalanced rudder, um, hydraulic steering. Oh, let's go, I like draw hydraulic steering. Harvey armor. Double hull bottom. Reinforced bulkheads. Anti flooding. Citadel. Okay. Uh, this thing is going to need to be amazing, so let's make it as good as we can. So this is an advanced tower. Gives us ridiculously good aiming. Put the rear tower there, roughly. Okay, funnels. This gives us, we would need two funnels. Gives us 98% engine efficiency. We can drop this down a little bit. Uh, not quite. Okay, maybe go to 24.2. Okay, that gets us over 100%. Okay, we can actually use barbettes for the first time, which is good news. So let's go with a uh, standard superimposed barbette or a medium superimposed barbette 5. Can't put this on there. Okay, we can go with a medium superimposed 3. All right, main guns. What kind of guns are we going to throw on this thing? I'm figuring 12-inch guns. Twelve or eleven inch guns. I think we go twelves. Okay. Um Can't quite put them in there. I mean, I, it, it says that it'll fit here. But I don't like how much it sticks out over the edge. So I think we, we just hold off and put some secondaries all the way down through the side of this thing. Uh, is there any casemates? There's spots for two-inch casemates, apparently. Not that two-inch guns really are going to do much of anything. All right. Now, 
Um, torpedo launchers. We've got our underwater torp tubes. We will be utilizing the coincidence rangefinders for now. 18 inch torpedoes. All right, so for secondaries, what do we want to use for secondaries here? How big are these seven inch guns? Definitely put a, I mean, I feel like that would be an eight inch gun. Let's put an eight inch gun there. For good measure. And then instead of the seven inch guns, maybe a bunch of six inch guns. Can we get get some six inch guns on here? Not really. That is unfortunate. I guess we're gonna go with five inch guns. Hopefully I can fit some of these on here. Okay, we can definitely get some five inch guns. We're not going to have as much secondaries as I'd like, but it's better than nothing. The five inch guns are currently capable of reaching out to 8.3. I'd like to get that even further. Let's just go ahead and increase the uh, barrel length on these. It's going to give us 50 caliber 5 inch guns, which are capable of reaching out to just under 10 kilometers. Jessica, thank you for the, t the $5 as always. Looking to play legendary mode as Japan and no one wants to fight you. Nice. Congrats. If I increase them to 2.9, they might. Legendary Modus Japan, and no one wants to fight me. Lol, I absolutely decimated China and France in 12 years time. Lol. Thank you so much, Jess. Appreciate it. Get a goat in the chat for Jess. I did. I did increase these to the uh, 2.9 inch guns. It's good. Good call. I think keeping these the five inch guns will be fine for now. And then we have these eight inch guns here too. And then of course the 12 inch 39 caliber. How do we want to do these? Like, what if we increase the barrel length? What, what can we get them to respectfully? 42 caliber. We lose quite a bit of reload. Yeah, I think we just hold on to the reload for now. And I think we try to put some armor on this thing. Um, current range is just under 10k. Uh, let's drop that down. I don't need a stupid amount of range yet. Let's go enhance reloading. That gets us 80 second reload. These are down to 30 seconds. And then this is a 49 second reload on the eight inch gun. A little bit of a four weight offset, but it's really not that bad. Let's go with advanced hydraulic turrets. Um, let's go standard armor piercing. Standard ratio. Let's go soft capped HE for the secondaries. Let's see how that works out for us. Everything else should be good to go. So let's Let's set into what we're going to do in terms of our armor. So the barbette, let's take that down to 10 inches. Let's go for three inch top armor. Actually, we can get away with two inches. Let's go two inches on the top armor. Um, the gun 
sides is considered seven inches. We'll go with that for now. Um, the eight inch turrets to make them a little bit, a little bit lighter. Go four inches of side armor on the five inch guns. Two inches, two inches. Okay. With everything that's there, let's go to three inches. Okay, that's maxed. Okay, then let's go to two inches. All right. We've got some some armor to play with, so let's let's do that. So we have what twelve inch guns. So let's go for a 12 inch belt. Okay, we can actually get away with that. That's kind of crazy. That's a five inch deck. Uh, let's go to three inches on the superstructure. Let's go to eight inches on the conning tower. Okay, now we're overweight. I guess we'd go with a 12.1 inch belt. I guess we were as close to as humanly possible to that. All right, so I already saw a name in the chat. Bringing back the Solace, the Magnifico. Side guns, yeah. I mean, they're secondaries. They're, they're eight inch secondaries. That's not too bad. I think this turned out to be a decent looking ship, to be honest, considering. It's it's definitely an interesting God I hate this sh I hate that. I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. Why does the fucking delete key have to be part of the freaking camera? God dang it, man. Alright, well, that's there. Let's slide this back. We can probably shorten the citadel quite a bit here. Okay, that saves us a little bit of weight, but it's not much. We can go for a 13 inch main belt now. Okay. All right, so that's that's our ship right there. This is gonna be the Solus class. Yeah, it saved weight because it killed all those casemates, but honestly, we don't need those casemates up here anyway. We've got quite a few of the smaller casemates back here in the back. We also shortened the Citadel a little bit, so that, that helped save a little bit of weight. But losing those little 3-inch guns or 2.9-inch guns isn't going to hurt us. I still hate the fact that every time we go to... There we go. All right, let's save that design. It's gonna cost $112 million to build this thing. 
but it should be our best ships currently. Like, not even close. Like, our new battleship that we decided to build is going to be kind of hilarious. Gaspaccio, how's it going? Welcome. But you're not wrong, AVM. problem is we can't really afford to build anything i would obviously want to build three of these one for each theater but now we're losing 20 million dollars a turn again which is just absurd okay one at uh barcelona one at Santiago de Cuba and one in Manila. Okay. So we've got our battle cruisers on their way. We got our heavy heavy cruisers that we were building that are eight months out. Um Much as I hate to admit it, I think the battle cruisers are probably the way of the future for the time being. Because they're cheaper to build than battleships, they're quicker to build than battleships, they're faster than battleships, and they can carry just as much firepower. So, it's kind of kind of the best of everything, currently. And we already know our heavy cruisers aren't the way to go, currently, because our heavy cruisers have been getting their asses whooped. But we gotta we got to drop our financial situation down a little bit. For the time being. Let's go for 50% there. What up, meddler? Ships named Solus seem to have a really bad... Uh, bad experience at some point do i need to up crew training for a little bit i mean we have like five thousand crew currently i didn't see how many of them there were going to be Uh, if we go here, how many crew are on board? So 1,460, so we should be okay. Actually, we got 13,000 crew, so yeah, we should be fine in terms of our crew pool. For the time being, anyway. Oh, we are losing a lot of money, though. Dude, it's just so hard to like make money as the as the Spanish. Seven months until the uh, heavy cruisers come online. Well, that's one less nation trying to kill us at the moment. Dude, still need to try to get the uh, Japanese and the Americans to chill. All right, we're going to let everything else go for the time being. Let things kind of progress on their own. Uh, we've maxed out the transport capacity, so we're going to drop that a little bit. I am going to have to drop this back as much as I hate it. I, I just can't be losing this much money. K-1 
can't afford it. I've never had a, a country struggle this much to start out with. Like, we are full on 17 years into the campaign and we are still bankrupt. Like, we, we are just not able to build anything. $16.4 billion GDP. I mean, technically we're catching up to the freaking Japanese in terms of their GDP currently. Because they're losing as they're at war with the French and the Austro-Hungarians and almost the Spanish. Keep it going. So The way the, way the uh, transport capacity works, as far as I'm aware, um, you want to have it maxed out, if at all possible. So we've currently got it maxed out at 200%. We're not increasing the transport capacity any further um, because it doesn't give us any extra, right? It just spends a lot of extra money for no real gain, at least not that I'm aware of. But if we reduce it any further, then it starts biting into our GDP and stuff like that because we're reducing our amount of, out of transports, so... That's where we have to pretty much sit for the time being. Um, in terms of crew training, we're doing okay in terms of crew. Um, tech budget, obviously, is, is the biggest issue right now. Would love to be able to uh, have some money, but alas, this is what we got to deal with, unfortunately. Four more months and those those cruisers finish, and that should help free up some of our money for a little while. Yeah, this is this has been rough, man. not actually a bad idea we could definitely mothball them that would save us some more money and everybody's cadets anyway so you're not wrong minister of finance believes that the fleet needs more destroyers he's ready i mean yes i would agree and 35 million dollars does sound like good but also it pisses off everybody in the world and we can't afford that right now Um, we don't have any unrest, so at this point, I just take the prestige. We go up here. Set crew. be mothballed that does save us actually a decent decent chunk but that also means when we go to like need them it's going to take a couple of months to commission them as well like that's that's the trade-off
Transports mean money, more money, better. You're not wrong. Yeah, I'll, I can, I can go through and do that. I know it's one ship at a time. There is civil unrest in the British Empire that is mentioned in several newspapers. Russian secret agents are behind this. I do not know anything about it. Or, uh, I mean, this would hurt our GDP, but increase our naval budget. I don't really want to do that, so just, I don't know anything about it. Norway would like to buy uh, the battleship Mendoza Warfare. Uh, no. As soon as I mothball the thing, they're like, yes, I want it. No, fuck off. <laughs> Not selling it. I might need that. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to mothball the the bat or the heavy cruisers to be honest. All right, how close? 2 months for the heavy cruisers to finish and then 11 months for the uh, new battle cruisers. Yeah, so they don't slobber over them. Well, if they offer again, I will just set it to like 1% one, 1 crew for the time being. The Italian Empire increases its Navy budget considerably. How should we respond? I mean, we should also increase it, but not at the expense of our GDP. Our Navy's budget is already too high. We need to invest more in our country's economy. Uh, I need the GDP. Let's go for the GDP. Embarrassing incident involves France. One of their most wealthy businessmen uh, is accused for illegal activities in our country. If we prosecute this person, our relations with France will be affected negatively. Uh, we should not interfere with justice. Sorry. Okay, we got anti-flooding too. Okay. You're going to be annoying, I see. Screw it. We're just, we're going to do it. We, we can always set everybody to limited. It's fine. God, that's expensive though. Okay, one more month and those guys will be done. Politics. Dude, I don't know why everybody hates us so much, man. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Okay.
Keep trying. We're almost out of debt. Crazy concept. Okay, keep it going. Oh my God, we're making money. And by making money, I mean we're, we're going to be increasing our research budget, obviously. Okay, successful again, or at helping delay war for a little longer. Try it again with uh, Japan first. All right, let's increase our tech budget a little bit. Let's go up to 30%. Dude, it's hard to believe that it is 1907 and we are this this much struggling. That is unfathomable for me in this game. Okay, one more month to finish that out. Look at all these guys building their ships. I think they're all fancy and stuff. Meanwhile, we're over here just struggling to get by. All right. Finances. We are making some money, finally. Let's go ahead and uh, increase our tech budget. From a politics standpoint, we're up over $17 billion GDP now. Still growing. Um, let's continue to try to strengthen ties with the U.S. And, and Japan real quick. Just trying to back us away from the brink of war, preferably. Just a little bit, little bit at a time. Everybody's already set to limited, so we don't have to worry about that. Seven more months to our battle cruisers come online. Okay. Um, just keep on a trucking, I guess. We are flying through this campaign and not in a good way. Like this campaign is going very quickly, but it is very, very tedious. Okay. 
continue to try to improve relations, please. It's not much money, but something. Been rough in World of Warships Legends. Yeah, I feel you there. Six losses, then won three and lost three. So you called it a... Yeah, it do be like that some days. It do be like that some days. Large industrialists proposed a redistribution of the government's budget in favor of the industrial sector at the expense of the Army and Navy budgets. What is your reaction? Um... I feel unauthorized to interfere in the government's financial decisions, but uh, increasing the GDP again is probably going to be useful, so let's keep going. Okay. I love how every time I increase like my, my relations with people, I'm getting provoked by others. It's like, can y'all chill? Like legitimately, can you guys can you guys chill? I'm trying to not be annihilated. You know, just just trying to get by over here. Let's go for sixty nine percent. Uh, all of these guys, so five months until these new battle cruisers come online. What up, Aiden? Welcome. Still losing money, but not too bad. So we'll hold it 69% for now. Four more months. Oh, I forgot to do the trying to avoid getting people upset with us thing again. Oh, it's a challenge for sure, especially on legendary difficulty. This is definitely the hardest hardest start I've ever had in this game. Okay, we just discovered oil in Sarawak. It's good news. All right, so we've got that unrest with the u.s under control we've got the un unrest with the japanese heading in the right direction the germans are about to declare war on us at any moment why why though i don't even have a god dang navy
Who are you currently at war with? So they are currently at war with the Austro-Hungarians and the Chinese. They're favorable with the, the Japanese, the Russians, the Americans, and the British. And they want to start another war with us. But why? Why? <laughs> why you do these things? The worst part is we border some of their territory too. So like, as soon as we go to war, I guarantee they're going to initiate a freaking like land invasion over here at Equatorial Guinea and steal that from us. Because reasons. They have an army force of 1.3 million compared to our 341,000. Why do they hate us? All right, well, keep it going. Nothing we can do about it. I'm sure we'll get declared on this, this month. I highly doubt we'd get away with trying to blockade Germany considering no more tonnage than we actually occur or no more tonnage than we actually have. Like I said, I am fully expecting them to declare war on us right now. And there's really nothing I can do about it. And there it is. Shocker. The German Empire has sent us an ultimatum demanding to withdraw our fleet. I can't afford to go to war with them, but I'm sure that they're going to want a stupid amount of money to shut the hell up for a little while. Uh, this is $14 million or $50 million. I mean, seems stupid to give them $50 million. So let's do this and we'll try to de-escalate the situation. Because I can't afford to go to war right now. All right, where are you at, it, uh, Germans? Improve relations, please. Please step away from the war button. Okay, so we're still losing a little bit of money per turn, to be expected. One more month, the uh, battle cruisers will be online. And then we'll at least have a little bit of a fleet. have a little bit more money too yeah I know they'll make more demands but I'm hoping I'm hoping that we can get a couple of uh, improved relations with them and, and kind of reduce the tensions because we, we don't have a choice right now Norway would like to order a Solus class battlecruiser absolutely go for it We failed to uh, improve relations with Germany. I really don't want to go to war right now. Let's try to continue to improve relations with Japan. Get them out of there. If we can get everybody else kind of good relations with us, then who knows, maybe we can figure something out with Germany. All right, finances, we are, I thought we were making money. What happened to our money? Oh, they're commissioning. They're not done yet. Let's 
fine. It's fine. Next turn. Nice. Well, you'll have to let me know, AVM, when you when you uh, finish your mod or something. Maybe uh, maybe I can check in and try something out. Some of our industrialists want to invest in the modernization of Russia's empire or Russian Empire's shipyards. What is your opinion? Um, I would say like only as long as it's like mutually beneficial. Okay, succeeded with Japan. Let's get back in there with Germany and try to improve again. All right. One more month, the commissioning will finish with the battle cruisers. Then we should be making money, and then we can increase our research budget some more. Yep, taller, we're still online, man. I am getting hungry. So I'm probably going to be calling it here before too long. It's going on seven hours straight. It's been a rough stream. Our shipping companies began to complain about the additional restriction of the Russian Empire when passing the Suez Canal. What should we do? Could make an official protest. I'd rather not, considering we just started working together with them. I definitely don't want to do that. Uh, make an official protest. Fuck it. Mark three ten 10-inch guns. Very nice. Okay. Relations improved with Germany. Very good. Okay, um, what else we got? So, still 30, let's keep it going, improve a little bit at a time. We're building up our naval prestige because of we're a diplomat. Like, what is the craziness about that? Like, that's crazy. We were down to like 22 prestige at one point today. And we're back up to 91, solely due to diplomacy. <laughs> like, good lord. Didn't realize I'd have to be an expert diplom or like diplomat to like win this campaign. Alright, let's put a little bit of crew training going on here. Let's go for something like 10%. Can you also play the Netherlands? Uh, Herich, I apologize if I, I said your name wrong. It is considered a minor nation, so you can't actually play the Netherlands. But it is in the game. It is a... Uh, we're actually allied with them currently. Funny. And actually, no. We're, we're allied with Norway. I lied. The majority in Parliament calls for immediate action against the Russian Empire. What is your reaction? Uh, no. Let's let's chill. Relax, folks. I'm just starting to get the freaking diplomacy under control and y'all are trying to undermine me. Like, let's chill a little bit. This actually increases our Navy budget without decreasing our GDP. So I think we'll go for that. It is going to reduce our naval prestige a little bit. Damn, you got Parliament out here trying to, like, undermine me at every step. It's like, guys, relax. <laughs> I'm just starting to get everybody to stop hating us. Can we chill just a little bit? A little bit. All right, let's get the Germans improved here a little bit.
trade naval prestige? That would be nice. Like you're you're cashing in some of your prestige for like certain things. Would come in handy. But uh, uh yeah, we are we're definitely we're definitely struggling. I don't think anybody can argue that. We have definitely struggled so far during this campaign. All right. What is our GDP at currently? Almost $18 billion. So we have actually overtaken Japan in terms of overall GDP. So that's good. We're not the, we're not the poorest country in the world now. <laughs> Baby steps. <laughs> Today, Japan. Tomorrow, the world. That's how this works. But yeah, currently in the game, you're only able to play as major nations, which are the United States, Great Britain, uh, Spain, France, Germany, Austro-Hungary, Italy, Russia, China, Japan. And so far, this Spanish campaign has been the, the most difficult campaign that I've started ever. Have a good one, Aiden. Appreciate you dropping in, man. Come on, Gabe. Yeah, I'm definitely going to be calling it here soon. I'm getting tired and hungry. I'm going to be making me some food. It's going to be good. Can't wait. I don't even know what I'm making today, to be honest. All right. We did manage to improve relations with the Germans. QT fall. Beautiful. All right. All right, let's give the uh, Chinese a little love here, too. Say, hey, we, we see you over there. We don't hate you. No reason to no, no reason to get all upset with us. Just out here doing our best, just like everybody else trying to survive. All right, so... Uh, yeah, I mean, really isn't much we can do right now. Just kind of wait. What do we got coming up? Ooh, we've got dreadnoughts. Up, up, the, the, speed, speed it up. <laughs> Give me the dreadnoughts now. Make it happen. I know it's a terrible idea, but I'm still going to do it anyway. Go ahead and speed up the rangefinders too. That should be another stereoscopic rangefinder upgrade. And control stations will be done in two, so that's fine. That's fine. All right, keep going. Next. You got some pole pork? Oh my God, that's so mean. Uh, yeah, so Jess, we're running the Dreadnought Improvement Projects mod. It's Brother Monroe's mod. You can download it from uh, Nexus Mods, I think is what it's called, the website. But uh, yeah, it, it has um, 
changed the tech tree up a little bit so that you can like split the different guns up so you can specifically target specific types of guns a little bit or research different things a little bit faster. Um, it also changes the way the game works with uh, shell and armor. It also changes, um, gets rid of submarines and mines from the game. Okay, so that worked with the Chinese nicely. Okay, let's try to get the uh, Germans back under control here. Just kind of keeping everybody on the same page. Three months until we finish the battleship uh, new hulls, which will give us a potential for the battleship, the dreadnoughts. Seven months until the uh, stereoscopic rangefinders come online, though. Not ideal. What if we just punch this? This is $3.6 million. Let's just get it done. Just get it done. Still going to be three months there. Still, uh, this is now only six months, though. Okay. I know nothing about modding the game. I know a little bit about changing game or like editing game saves. Like I, I know you've seen me go in and I've showed you guys videos, how you can go in and, and like edit specific things in the campaign. And I've actually gotten a little bit better at that as well. But yeah, in terms of like actual modding, yeah, I don't know anything about it. One of the military ships has collided with a destroyer belonging to the Chinese empire. Journalists are interested in our opinion. You state that the accident happened because of the incompetence of the Empire or the Chinese Empire's crew. It all happened because of bad weather conditions. Things happen. Yeah. Bad weather conditions. No reason to get all upset about it. These things happen. Oh, shit. Everybody's pissed off at the British all of a sudden. They're canceling. They're, they're like, in uprising. They're, they're going crazy. The British are in uh, full-scale revolt. All right. So, two more months for the battleships. Five months for the rangefinder. We seem to have at least gotten... Uh, ourselves out of the the worst of the diplomacy issues at the moment i think we will continue to try to uh, improve relations with the uh not necessarily the italians let's go for the russians let's try to improve relations with the russians a little bit if we look at the italians what, what does the italians have currently they have two battleships four heavy cruisers nine light cruisers nine destroyers they are allied with the americans which is not ideal so, it's just a thought. If we were to decide to go after the, the Italians, the Americans might have something to say about that. Which is not ideal. Alright, well, keep it going. Officially making money. I ain't gonna lie. Now you got me wanting pulled pork, man. I don't have any pulled pork. I do have HelloFresh, and I have several meals in the fridge ready for me to prepare and cook up, so I don't know what I'm gonna have. Can't remember what I had ordered for this week. <clears throat> All 
I don't know if you guys have ever had HelloFresh. It's freaking fantastic. Maybe a bit expensive, but it's fantastic. Um. So yeah, so we have a creamy dill pork filet that I could potentially cook up with couscous and green beans. We have a sweet chili lime glazed pork chops, which also sounds amazing, with sweet potato carrot jumble and uh, sesame seeds and lime. And then smoky chicken thighs with yellow rice. Or creamy garlic shrimp and ricotta ravioli. No, I lied. This this was this was what's coming next week. That ain't what I currently have. I lied. That's what's next week. All right. Britain is starting to push into China. They managed to take Kashmir. Expanding the British Raj. Meanwhile, they're fighting a revolt. All right. Well, uh, we are making a little bit of money. Our GDP is up to $18.3 billion. So slowly but surely, we are starting to make a little bit of headway. Um... Bump up our crew training just a bit. Just just a little bit. One more month till we get the dreadnought halls. I haven't eaten yet, man. Y'all be talking about food and chat. Now I'm I've already been hungry. My belly's sitting here grumbling. Semi armored cruiser is available okay and so are my dreadnoughts let's go i'm ready ready to look at some dreadnoughts finally all right well research we can pull off the battleship design for now uh let everything kind of go up on its own the rangefinder will finish soon let's go ahead and get some more control station as well that'll get us a little bit more accuracy as well go uh let's see we want to wait until we get the the new thing so let's wait four months hey we're almost to 70 likes thank you guys so much man appreciate everybody it's been a brutal stream i ain't gonna lie it's been a rough one But we're doing what we got to do. Thailand, they need 63,244 total tons to take Thailand. I mean, we got to try, right? But we'd be crazy not to try. Sure. How much tonnage do we have? We have 157,000. Okay, well, we've got this entire fleet. It's right here, doing absolutely nothing. It is going to cost us money to send them out, but... Uh, let's take them out. Send them over here. It's going to take... Okay, so it, it takes six months to, to grab it. How long will it take us to get there? It'll take three turns. That's that's it. Okay, that's fine. Get over there. Uh, you guys as well can get over here. Okay, and if we can get the guys from the uh, Cuba over here as well in under six months, that would be amazing. Five turns. It's like perfect. Okay, beautiful. Get it done. If we can take Thailand, that'll be huge. Because that's a decent chunk of land and money. So, if we can take that, I'd be real happy. 
No guarantee that it'll work, but we're going to give it a shot. It is going to cost us a lot of money to send our fleet out, which means we are going to have to drop our research budget a little bit. Um, we can handle it for the moment. Because I don't want to... I want to get at least the rangefinders. All right, so from a research standpoint, this finishes next month. That finishes in two months. We're losing a boatload of money trying to get over here and take this, so let's hope that we can get away with it. Okay, one more month, two more months, and then we can drop our research budget down to give us a little bit of a reprieve while we have our fleets out. Okay, so I got sweet ginger pork chops. I've got silky Sicilian penne pasta. And I've got hot honey chicken. I lied. The silky Sicilian pasta is not there. Neither is the hot honey chicken. Why is it showing me the things that I, I haven't actually gotten? I, I hate it. I lied. All right, stereoscopic rangefinder 2 is done. That's huge. Semi-armor piercing ballistic cap shells are also big. Okay. Let's get rid of that. The German Empire's uh, Kaohsiung Bay has been conquered by the Chinese. Very interesting. All right, financially... Uh, let's go ahead and take this off for now. Um, we get one more month there to finish that, and then we can reduce our spending. Dude, we are spending so much money right now. Oh my god. So ridiculous. All right, let's reduce this all the way, and then let's try to reduce this a little bit and see if that's going to drop this. Okay, it's still at one month. Now it goes to eight months. Oh, God. All right, well. We're just going to play with it until we find where it starts to get increased. Okay, it goes to two months there. Two months. Two months. Come on, game. Okay, one month. All right. That'll save us a little bit of money for a moment. Get that done. We've got a 70% chance to succeed right now. 
And when these guys get over there, I would assume that would be a 100% chance to succeed. Uh, but we do have to reduce our, our spending for now. So let's drop that most of the way down. Let's go for 10% or so. Losing $10 million per turn. It will take um, seven months to complete. We did finish that, so we can reduce that. Let everything go up on its own. Let's go look at our new designs and see what we can come up with. Oh my god, the Dreadnoughts are here, baby. The Dreadnoughts are here. Let's go. We got the small Dreadnoughts. Mm, definitely not. Okay, that one's not so bad. This one's capable of being built up to 16,700 tons. But, uh, yeah, honestly, I think I'd just go with the Dreadnought one. Big nasty. Big nasty. What is it capable of being? 22 knots of top speed for a battleship. Let's go. Okay, let's reduce the range all the way down. It's going to be standard crew quarters, maximum displacement. Uh, actually, let's drop the beam down to zero. That way we don't spend too much on engines. All right. Main tower, we have the reinforced main tower. Oh, wait, hold that thought. So this is 30 night vision, 11 aiming. Okay, this is just better. So reinforced main tower is definitely better. Secondary rear tower, four. Okay, funnels. Let's go ahead and put our stereoscopic rangefinder on there. Advanced radio, now that we have radio. What do we need in terms of... Okay, that gives us 44%. That is not enough. It gives us 130%, so that is definitely something we can get away with. So yeah, we basically need this. Okay. So now that we know that that's a thing, we can actually pull this in a little bit. Pull this back a little bit that gives us a little bit of room to do normal things let's go standard superimposed barbette i'm gonna make sort of a standard dreadnought okay main guns as much as I would love to throw these 16-inch guns on here, I know this is a terrible idea. <laughs> that looks so silly. The sad part is we can almost pull it off. <laughs> we can almost pull this off. Um, a little bit of an aft weight offset. Okay. Let's put the guns in it real quick. Um, for casemates, I want to have at least the seven inch guns. Now these are the 50 calibers, so we could reduce the the barrel range or the barrel length on those. Which 
which gives us the 40 calibers. Well, these are still showing as 50, 50 caliber guns for some reason. Weird. Okay, so in terms of center line guns, these are currently weighing quite a bit. Okay, so let's take the turret armor down. Let's take it down to like 12 inches. Let's go with um, 4 inches and a 10 inch barbette. Three inch inner belt's fine, half an inch inner deck. For the seven inch guns, we'll go with eight inch casemate. Four and a half inch top casemate armor. This is absurd. I shouldn't be doing this. Do three 16 inch guns instead of four. I mean, we, we can tweak things. I'm just, I'm just trying to have a little bit of fun right now. Let's see what we can, what we can get away with. Um, let's go standard ratio. Let's go with common common pointed capped ballistic HE. Uh, let's go soft capped. Soft capped HE. Um, semi armor piercing seemed like it would be a good idea, but I think we go instead we go with like semi ballistic. So we are overweight, but it's not too bad. The range is still over 10,000 meters as well, or 10,000 kilometers. We don't have a lot of armor. This thing is absurd. There's no reason I should be throwing 16 inch guns on this thing. Alright, let's take this down to like 10 inches. Take this to 2. What is the accuracy looking like? Not particularly amazing. And we're basically relying on only these uh, casemates to protect us from riffraff. So probably wouldn't be a bad idea to have like a couple of five inch guns potentially or six inch guns thrown in here for good measure. Something like that, just to have a little bit of extra firepower. Um, the belt armor and, and stuff is what's going to be our problem. If we get rid of this, we can move this up a little bit. It's not going to have the best firing angle because of these secondary turrets. But 
that does save us quite a bit of weight. Still gives us 16 inch guns. And that should allow us to add a little bit more armor to this thing. So I think we go ahead and crank up the armor. Let's go to 10 inches. Um, let's go, can we get 16? We can totally get 16. And then we'll have to adjust our fore and aft belt armor. Okay. Uh, not the heaviest armored ship in the world. Go for the two inch deck armor all the way across. Now we have a slight four weight offset. That does allow us to add a little bit more armor. Okay. So there we have it. So this thing is going to cost $152 million. It is capable of 22 knots of top speed. It's got 16 inch guns. What is the turning circle on this thing? One thousand fifty meter turning circle. That is awful. There's not a whole lot I can do about it. So we just got to hope for the best. What up, Dart? How's it going? Such horrible secondary placement. Yeah, I mean, there's not much I can really do about it. I can't put the turret in here. I would love to get this turret in here well, I guess I can technically put it there okay. if that rotates then that's fine this one is fine because it's under it's like protected by the uh, the barbette so the gun doesn't have to worry about that and that allows this to be potentially moved even further forward should save us a little bit more weight it's not much but Every little bit counts at this point. Okay. So yeah, about 11 and a half inch fore and aft belt, 16 inch main belt. Should be okay. It is very expensive though. Like ridiculously expensive. All right, what do we call this thing? The Castilla? That's not bad. That's actually not bad. Corsair class. We got it. Corsair it is. Now, we're not going to be able to start building a Corsair class until after we get our fleets home. What up, Yaga? All right, so yeah, like I said, we we can't really do anything until we get our fleet home from this whole like conquest of Thailand.
but I mean we if we pull off this conquest of Thailand which we should there should be no reason we can't then uh, from there like that's that's more money for us right more provinces Still a 70% chance to succeed. I know we're coming through here, so we'll be there shortly. It'll take... They should be there next month, I would assume. And then it would take... Five months to finish. Yeah. Alright, how's the politics looking? Uh, the Italians and the, the Germans are upset with us for some reason. The Japanese are starting to get upset with us again for some reason too. All right, well, let's uh, keep the... Uh, let's go for improving the relations with the Germans again. All right, next turn. We're under $200 million in naval funds. Hello from Bavaria? Well, hello from Ohio. Uh, Hans or Hannes? Apologize. Hans? I guess I could just call you Hans. Hopefully that's close. Welcome to the stream. We're two likes away from 70, by the way. If you guys are enjoying the stream, make sure you punch that like button. Helps the channel out. Oh, come on. Come on, game. Let's go. At a press conference, you were asked about recent evidence that foreign espionage targets our Navy. How do you respond? Mm, referred to the matter as a constructed rumor. Okay. Still doing well at reducing our tensions with everybody. Let's try to get the uh, Japanese... Where are oh, they below us? Forgot. Improve relations, please. Okay, we are officially here. We have a 98% chance to succeed. If this fails, I'm going to cry. I'm going to actually cry. <laughs> All right, five months until this finishes. Okay. Dude, I am a master diplomat, apparently. Lord have mercy. I've been able to bring us back from the brink of war on everybody. Like, literally the entire world wanted to go to war with us. And now we've gotten it to relatively under control. Okay, let's keep it going. Four more months. Thank you guys for hitting that 70 likes as well. You guys are great. Appreciate you guys. 
and relations were improved with the Germans as well. Beautiful. B E A beautiful. And we're almost out of debt. Despite having our navy out on the open o or out in the ocean. What's going on? We're almost a twenty billion dollar GDP. Holy crap. All of our things are coming together slowly. It's about time for something horrific to happen. It's usually how this works. Do, 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 do. Yeah, we're currently at seven and a half hours of streaming. <laughs> it's been a brutal one. We've done this. This is just normal for Ultimate Admiral, man. I start out, I start streaming. The next thing I know, it's 10 hours later and everybody's like, Man, you've been streaming a long time. I went to bed and woke up and you're still here. So yeah, that's that's that sounds about right. Does sound about right, if I'm being honest. Alright, two more months and we should have Thailand. We are starting to make money again. Which means we must have finished building the ship for the friendly. So let's go ahead and crank up some money or some research. Okay. Well, I appreciate all y'all for hanging out with me for as long as you have. It's been a it's been a rough stream, but at the same time, it's been a, a lot that's gone on. So thank you guys for hanging out. The Germans just attacked Portugal? You bastards. I like how they, like, rubbed elbows with us. They're like, hey, we're going to buddy-buddy and we're going to attack Portugal at the same time. I'm going to need you all to chill. Okay. So the Italians are, like, the only ones that are close to going to war with us again. And I'm not opposed to the idea once we uh, build up some more stuff, obviously, but one more month, we should have this. So it is officially January of 1910. Thailand should be ours. Yeah, Dragon, I'm glad you enjoy, man. I do try to make it entertaining. I know this has been kind of a uh, a, a boring sweat fest of trying to stay alive and, and somehow recover uh, today's stream, but we are, we are trying to make things entertaining. The government is worried about the growing international tension. A military confrontation with the United States becomes possible. What is your advice? Um, I mean... negotiate i guess I, I don't know why we would suddenly want to go to war with the u.s after we just spent all this time to like butter them up so let's just pay them some money we did in fact take thailand that's huge all right so let's uh park in the philippines let's send you guys back home to Santiago de Cuba and then send our third fleet back over to Barcelona this has been a, a diplomatic episode for sure <laughs> it definitely has been very diplomatic 
uh, we, we've done good things. We've, we've captured territory. It's not like we're not. We've gathered two more provinces despite losing our uh, Guam and, and uh, Saipan out here to Russia. Like, we still have expanded our territories during this episode. We have managed to survive. We've managed to uh, kind of build back a little bit at a time. Continue to uh, get back into building research for our, our ships. Because we are still very much behind. So, uh, yeah. I think we are going to go ahead and end it there. It is January of 1910. So, thank you guys so much for, for joining me. Uh, we've gone through another whole decade in this stream. So, hopefully you guys have enjoyed. But, yeah. I, I feel like I, I should be nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize. I mean, Nobel probably hasn't existed yet. Ah, uh, yeah, I would. I forget when Nobel... Okay, so... Nobel was uh, originally touted for being, you know, because he, he created gunpowder, right? Or not not gunpowder, but uh, dynamite. Um, so they, they named the Peace Prize after him, which was kind of ironic. But, uh, yeah. Anyway, it was... Is a whole thing. I, I think I, I should be at least on the table. I mean, come on. We have we have managed to bring ourselves back from the break of destruction and uh, starting to warm up to everybody with the exception of the Italians, which we may end up going to war, uh, war with again in this one uh, in the near future. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. I will be streaming this guaranteed tomorrow night. So Sunday evening uh, or Sunday afternoon, one or the two. So keep an eye out for that. I will be streaming this tomorrow if you guys are interested in coming back and checking it out with us. But if you like what I'm doing, punch the like button, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And as always, I will see you in the next video.